Пошли. Все в месте. Какие ваши доказательства? Кокаином. Real quick before we start, I just want to take a moment to introduce our guest this week, my friend Scarlett. She is the host or co-host, I should say, of Never Log Off. And yeah, she's our second uh, guest. So Scarlett, thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. I've had Scarlett on my show before, and she's an MMT economist, and all of my viewers loved her because she's like a wealth of knowledge. So yeah, really happy to have you here. Also, there's another thing that I have to say. It's weighing heavily on my heart. Um, I've gotten so much credit for the wonderful outro for the leftist mafia, but I didn't make that Lance did. So <laughs> I put I post uh, the vods on my channel. You can, you can have the stolen valor. <laughs> I, I I can't I can't do it. Just ethically, I can't do it. So I just have to let everyone know that's all Lance. That is not me. I had nothing to do with that. Although I will be working on an edit to add more Jordan uh, Peterson and like memes to it eventually when I have free time, but that's all Lance. So I, I can no longer claim the credit folks. So I appreciate oh, the appreciate wonderful it. comments, but that's all. That's all Lance. I also love Lance's pretty interface that when it streams from, I linked a lot. Oh, that's not me. Who does that? The pretty, the, the pink kid. That's you. So, no. so I, I, I do stuff with a worker co-op and that's the artist. His name's Kyle G and he does like all the really cool graphics and stuff. Yeah. yeah okay but, but attributed uh, to your camp yes yeah, coming from your your corner oh yes yes yeah it was from that right. corner of the internet yes you are correct yes yes love <laughs> it. I love it. So pretty. <laughs> yeah we all have stolen valor here what the fuck's going on actually i don't know if i should curse anymore i stopped cursing on my youtube channel uh just because i'm oh, I, curse. I don't i you might as well get that out of here because as y'all know i curse a lot so there's no yeah. point to do that when i'm gonna keep it up <laughs> <laughs> well that's that works then um i know there's there's a lot of things um that we all so I, want I should to just mention up front so we are using a different streaming platform uh today Streamyard. uh for the audience um let us know how it works out if it's all smooth if everything's good we can see your chat on the side i, I think this is from my youtube channel but it may also be coming from twitter as well since we're also streaming on twitter today on trn show Oh, um, right. oh, that's yeah. Hilarious. So, multiple ways to uh, watch this. I also considered doing it through Facebook as well, but the Facebook audience is a little weird. <laughs> it's very, yeah, it's a very uh, conservative audience. It's very different. I don't know. You too, um, huh? <laughs> it's just a wild. That place is insane. Facebook is insane. Um, yeah. And the messages I get on there, oh my god, <laughs> just crazy people. Horrifying, uh, right? Yeah. But uh, anyways, yeah. So let us know if everything uh, goes well. Are are the squares going to move again? I think they are, right? Because Binder hasn't joined yet. Because I'm, I'm readjusting uh, everyone's windows. So which so once Binder comes in, I think he, he'll fill in. Like the the top three should stay where they are. I just cropped mm. it in, so it, it initially was uncropped. But I figured it's better to have everyone kind of zoomed in, uh, so you can see your faces better. Um, mm. So, but this layout should yeah remain. Once Binder comes in, it'll be I assume six blocks. Yeah, the only time it'll change is if you put on a video, right, where it'll all kind of shift to the yes. side. Thank you for mentioning that, because uh, we do have the ability now to play videos that we all can see at the same time. So uh, I have a couple just for laughs that we can play later. Oh, one, nice. Like, you, you, you sent me that one, and then I got a Ben Shapiro clip that we can all enjoy from this week. I'm sure some of you already know what that is. <laughs> but uh, 
<laughs> uh, ben Shapiro this week was just insane. Um, so we'll get there later on. But he's he's yeah. been putting out some uh, some bangers. Oh my, he's, he's he never a misses kind of person. <laughs> no, he never. Oh, by the way, I should before I forget, folks. Um, I'm repping uh, the fam here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should have one of your shirts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we could be twins. Yeah, I, I I was too cold to wear just the shirt because this studio is freezing. But um, yeah, yeah. Very nice. I like it. That's awesome. I like it. And it, it works better for you because you don't use a green screen. I, I realized after I ordered the shirt, it's like, oh, oh yeah, I have a green screen. <laughs> so oh, whenever I wear the shirt, you can see right through the lettering, but whatever. You can see the yeah. See, see, that's why I couldn't use a green screen myself, um, green or blue screen, because I tried blue screen. But my tattoos get keyed out. So oh, really? my <laughs> arms look transparent and it looks very freaky and weird. So, yeah. Yeah, unless I wear a long sleeve, but I always am hot in the studio. You, now I'm cold, but usually I'm hot. Um, so I to always the, roll up my sleeves. To the people in the chat, I believe Bender is logging on a little later. Don't quote me on it, though. And um, mm. Blair, well, I, I am not bored. I am fried, Celeste. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> not happy to be here. I'm fried. You can't see the glassy look in my eyes. I'm very <laughs> enthusiastic to be here, actually. <laughs> Celeste is a, so is a staple on my channel. She's quite the... She, she's kind of a troll, but she's like a, a loving troll, so she's she means nothing uh, mean by it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and um, I was gonna say the dessert. Yes, I believe Blair will be here next week. And thank you, Grandpa. I love love. Yes, love flattery. Um, <laughs> <laughs> flattery will always be accepted here. Panda, write to me. Oh, now you're always fried. Don't be on to me. Don't tell my teeth. <laughs> well, and you can see super chats here too. I'm just like amused, at, like oh, yeah. a boomer on this. This is really cool. Yeah, this Amazing. is really cool. I can well, actually see the comments. Technology. Well, can we take a few minutes to let Scarlett introduce herself properly yes. and what you do and whatnot? Because um, we're, we're not, we're kind of adjusting Scarlett to like the guest format because you're only our second guest, but the first one was really great. Sure. So we're still going through with this. So do you want to tell us who you are and what you do? Uh, yes. I mean, professionally, I'm an economist. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to get too deep into my, you know, where I work and what I do, but uh, yeah, that's what I do in my day job. And Online, I have uh, a Twitch show that you mentioned, Never Log Off, that's kind of like this, just a panel show that, you know, we just share things that, that are funny. We actually used to use StreamYard, but we switched to Melon, uh, which mm. is, they both have their strengths and, and weaknesses. Neither of them is really perfect, but yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't heard it. It's called Melon? Yeah. I'll look mm. that up later. Um, but yeah, and I also have another show that, Hasn't been too active lately, but we're hoping to get back uh, on track. That's about MMT, actually. Never game over. Uh, the purpose of that show is to play games together and sort of analyze them under an MMT lens. And it's similar to how like Marxists also do like cultural analysis. Hmm. That's interesting. So, like, uh, what kind of games do you do you play that you analyze? Uh, we are starting with Final Fantasy VII, the original one. Oh, nice. Um, just trying to look for, you know, ways to understand things in an MMT framework. Um, that's so interesting. Yeah, we haven't had. I'm a huge gamer, that. so that, that, that's a, that, that's a good way. Also, just to kind of connect to like a different kind of audience and just kind of bring people into a conversation they may not be too too familiar with, like mm -hmm. bring gamers into that conversation around MMT. I, I like right. that. Yeah, because everyone plays games pretty much, and it's easier to relate to or to understand if you can relate to it. Yeah. I, I am the redheaded lady, Leanne Bernini, DC. I, but I, I changed my hairstyles. Corner, I'm reading. I'm reading. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> to the redheaded <laughs> lady. I'm like, I'm like sh surely it's the one black lady on the show. <laughs> like, it's the same one. Like. Olay stopped coming. We got this new girl here. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. First of all, Okay, new era. That was that was twenty twenty two. Okay, this is the new color scheme for this year. Get with it. <laughs> um, okay, so where are we starting? Let's let's get started. Anybody have something pressing on their heart they want to talk about? I feel like you did, didn't you? 
I did, but I'm fried. So you see how I like my spirit is different than when I when I sent you. <laughs> when I originally when I sent you that message, I was being very scholarly and academic. That was during during the workday. Um, so I'll, I'll lean into intelligence later. <laughs> Mike, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was. Wait, wait, uh, I got... Go ahead. Well, I was. Oh, Max, backstage. Was... Bender's backstage. Bring Bender. Oh, sorry. Okay, well, there we go. We'll start with Bender. Uh, sorry, that's my fault. Bender. I was looking at the backstage. Hello. Hello, oh, I was uh, waiting my for bad. you to let me in, and I my was bad, my bad. The entire it was time. two minutes. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is You're my land return to the show after a, a two week absence. Yeah. We will have to hear about uh, CES. I want to yeah. hear what the, what the what the crypto bros are up to now. <laughs> Everyone else, yes, there. yeah, sure. You want to talk about that now? Or we got other stuff to get to. Well, no, let's, uh, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Want to do that? The people, sure. Missing. All yeah. right, let's do You've it. You've been gone so a while. Last, let's get to it. Last week, I went to CES in Vegas uh, as my job uh, to report on it. And, you know, CES is big. It's the biggest you know, tech show in the world, apparently. It's the consumer electronics show. And you got companies as big as, you know, like Microsoft and, and Samsung and the TV companies like LG and, and TCL, et cetera, et cetera. They all show up there. But then you get a bunch of like startup companies and a bunch of like, you know, medium to mid-level size tech companies. Like they all want to be there. And, you know, the interesting stuff is that you get to see uh, products that you might see in the coming uh, months and years from like those big companies that will be in stores or whatever. But then you also see a lot of shit that will never, ever be sold to people because it's all prototypes. Uh, or not even. It's literally like things that are showing off that are demos that don't even really work. They just tell, you know, they, it couldn't work the way they wanted to out in the field. But you also get uh, another thing out of the show. It's basically a feel for what the tech industry is finding to be trendy and buzzworthy. Um, this year, for example, all these startups all wanted to use the term metaverse or Web3 or VR, virtual reality, to describe what it is they do. And many times, this did not fit the company at all. Uh, for example, you know, Web3 requires blockchain to be behind whatever the platform is that you're, you're claiming to be Web3. Uh, at CES, however, if you're a company that basically just wants to get across the idea that people should be in charge of their content, you call yourself a Web3 company, which makes no sense whatsoever. And then for Metaverse, for example, you know, uh, uh, Meta, the Facebook's parent company, they made it quite clear that Metaverse is any sort of immersive world that's 3D, virtual reality, VR. That I mean, they made the word uh, term Metaverse uh, popular. Um, but at CES, basically anyone who is creating any sort of 3D world, as in 3D graphics, not virtual reality, like if anyone created their own Second Life or World of Warcraft or Roblox, they were calling themselves metaverse. Uh, very weird. Very weird. As if that's always been a thing. Yeah, uh, it's kind of muddying the waters because it's. All, I thought metaverse was supposed to be like something with the headset and you're like in a world that is separate from your screen. But it's also right. now applying like counter like uh, retroactively to <laughs> places like Second Life. That's the, the, we the weirdest thing to me was I was watching a panel with the CEO of Napster on the, you know, he's one of the panelists. You guys remember Napster? Uh, I do. <laughs> uh, so he's up there on this panel and he's talking about how Napster was actually the first Web3 company. And I'm sitting there like, dude, what are you talking about? First of all, their blockchain never had anything to do with Napster whatsoever. Um but then second of all, like, why are you debasing Napster by calling it a Web3 company? Like, there is not a single Web3 company that has so far, and I'm going to uh, 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 guess they will never, but there has not been a single Web3 company who has done anything meaningful to culture, society, people as a whole nothing you can't think of a, a single company who calls themselves web3 who has done anything meaningful yet napster completely changed the entire fucking music industry like napster changed how music is distributed because of napster the music industry doesn't try to sell cds anymore they moved to a streaming model because everyone preferred to just download the shit they wanted on napster back in the day 
So that to me was ridiculous. Like all those Web3 companies should be wanting to be the next Napster in terms of having some real defining sort of uh, 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 legacy left behind on some sort of industry. Yet Napster wants to be a company that has uh, in an industry that has done nothing. And second of all, if even if we go by like the the buzz term that they use at CES, like the buzz term at Web3 meaning, where it's just like content creators get having ownership over their and control over their content, Napster is the fucking exact reverse of that. Like Metallica sued Napster because they had no control over their music on Napster. Mm -hmm. Like Napster's whole deal was people could download whatever the fuck they wanted on Napster, even though the, the music artist did not want them to download their shit for free. So it was just really bizarre. And then when it comes to like the word crypto, one thing I noticed completely, it was just like a word you don't say there. I watched <laughs> panel after panel and none of them and these are panels that were talking about web3 and they mentioned blockchain even nfts were okay to talk about there were a lot of companies giving away their nft like giving away nfts to like promote their company for free basically i mean i'd rather get a fucking little uh free pen with your company logo on it than an <laughs> nft no one cares about that shit but anyway no one says the word crypto at any of the panels i'm watching uh, there was a little like fintech area on the showroom floors where like the company set up their booths. There was like a total of eight companies in that section. Two of them were like crypto payment platforms. And one of them was a Bitcoin mining hardware company. Other than that, like it was incredible to see that no one wanted to touch cryptocurrency crypto it's like they they smartly saw what was going on in the real world and they were like yeah maybe maybe we skip this year it was very <laughs> fucking bizarre but they're still engaged in crypto they're just not saying crypto because the nf i mean nfts like they're still engaged oh. in this stuff but but they're just not saying the word crypto because right right it's I mean, just if, like if, not if you're calling yourselves a web3 company or dealing in nfts or dealing with blockchain i mean you're minting tokens on the blockchain you're dealing with crypto I mean, it's that simple. In order to create an NFT, you have to mint a token to connect to whatever media you want to put on the blockchain. That's, that's I mean, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. So it's just, it's just marketing at this point. They're just like changing words to protect themselves, basically. Yes, yes. They're, they're okay with the non-fungible tokens, basically. Yeah. The fungible tokens, they're not okay with. I mean, that's really, that's, that's seriously, the, that's like the difference. That's it, pretty much. I have a question. Was there any tech that actually that you uh, that impressed you that you were like, "Wow, I actually like this. <laughs> this is cool technology that, glasses, that's going to help society." Gla well, I don't know about help society, but glasses-free <laughs> 3D TVs were fucking incredible to see. Oh, that's a it thing. It was mind blowing. There's basically I, I don't know the technologies exactly, but there was it was very clear to me that there's two different technologies that these companies use to do this. One it makes it look like the 3D goes deeper and deeper into the screen and the companies that use that technology like that that shit looks like like your 4k uh, perfect display is right now but using 3d it was insane like i've never mm. seen crystal clear 3d like that and you didn't even need glasses uh that shit is not coming to your home anytime soon the companies i were i was talking to that was using that sort of 3d technology we're talking about devices that cost in the five figures. So that's not oh, wow. something we're going to be seeing. Yeah. But there's also the 3D that looks like it's popping out at you. Like the, the type you see in like, you know, at 3D movies and, and stuff. But again, glass is free. That stuff is obviously not as you, you guys probably used it. Like this type that mm -hmm. like your your eyes sort of go cross eyed after a little bit. And it's not, you know, it doesn't look as it's stereoscopic clear. like the Nintendo 3DS, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks a bit you, if you want look at it for a while, it starts to feel a little bit weird. Mm. And it's obviously the, the the imagery is not as like rich and deep, like the colors and the, the focus and all that. But um, that shit's probably coming soon. I spoke to a company that said they're dropping a 3D a glasses free 3D display uh in the next couple of months that's going to cost less than 2k now yes Whoa. very expensive but for new technology that's, that's usually really the good. range that mm, stuff yeah. starts in like your your 4k tv your flat screen tvs even like your blu-ray players like uh that shit all started at like that range before they got ro rolled out more broadly and then they hit the price point that they were ended up being at so mm. like it's possible that we'll see that stuff soon 
Um, mm. Also, Tesla's fucked. Tesla's absolutely <laughs> fucked. <laughs> yeah, they Every are. Co- like, I can't even tell you how many companies were there rolling out EVs, talking about their EVs. I was there when Sony surprised everyone with their EV that they built with Honda called the Afila. Like, mm-hmm. you got car comp- the, the big car comp- automakers getting into the EV uh, uh, game. And you got companies that do not do cars at all getting into the ev uh in uh, space like tesla is not going to be unique uh i mean they already are and there's a bunch of evs already out but it's gonna get so saturated i don't see how they compete with all these big automakers honestly i, I just don't see it especially when they start rolling out the uh more of the more affordable cheaper vehicles like tesla is a luxury vehicle it's like 50k like people, mm-hmm. that's not usually the and and, the and they people. fall apart. Like the build quality compared to actual automakers is just not. It's not there. Um, right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I mean, and their value keeps keeps dropping. Just showing you like how how overvalued that company was before. Right. Right. Oh, and, and another thing too. to talk about in 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 our political sphere, right wingers and 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 people like that always used to love always love to use the terms about like uh, uh the the how like robotics. Or AI are going to replace, uh, you know, service workers and and any sort of job like that, and they use it to like dangle over workers' heads when they talk about raising the minimum wage and stuff. Well, I watched a bunch of like different uh, robotic companies put their demos out there, and one thing that stuck out to me was there was a literal service worker robot there that was there to make bubble tea. I forgot the company that that uh, was showcasing it, but it was a bubble tea making robot and. People who were there were able to get on the line and order their bubble tea and watch the robot make their bubble tea. Well, a human being had to fill the cup with ice and hand it to the robot. The robot was then able to, you know, hold it under the the uh, bubble tea dispenser and then hold it under the mixer and then hold it under the uh, the machine that puts the cover on it. So the robot was able to do that. That was impressive to watch. But then the robot puts it down and the human being has to go over and take it and bring it to the actual person who ordered it. On top of that, that whole cool process of watching that robot make a single bubble tea. I, I should have timed it, but it was about like five to ten minutes to make a single <laughs> bubble tea. The robot took forever. It took way too long. Like there, no, no bubble tea store would be able to live, would be able to be, would be able, would be able to survive, I should say, on making six to twelve bubble teas per hour for their customers. <laughs> They'd go out of business very quick. So I mean, we're not. So I guess anywhere. that's not rolling out anytime soon. Then that's yeah, we're not a... <laughs> anywhere there. Yeah, the coolest thing I saw was a fucking Transformers toy, uh, Optimus Prime that like this robotics company made that's for sale right now. But it's a toy. It's about 19 inches tall, and it was insane to watch. It was able to do like these cr- this whole crazy karate routine. It got down on the floor and did push ups and sit ups. <laughs> it's a toy though. It's a remote control Optimus Prime. And I thought it was so cool because it's something you could actually go out and buy right now. It's not cheap. Again, I think it's like a thousand bucks. But in in a in a whole like room full of stuff that they're showing off that is like you know six years if not more down the line. If again it ever even shows up for a consumer use, I mean having something shown to us that actually is available now to people was pretty crazy to me. So I enjoyed watching that little fucking robot. Commander, you (laughs) did. You was at a convention or something? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. I'm like, bro, I don't know what I missed it, but we must be on the convention. Deals. I'm like, that's what it is. He was on tour. That's, that's why he was at this show. Right, CES, <laughs> Consumer Electronics Show. I was like, clearly I'm hearing about every stop on this tour. <laughs> <laughs> I only, I only talked, uh, I only talked for about ten minutes nonstop. It before, might not, it you know, might that was good. Though, that long, you know, you know how time is moving for me. <laughs> like, <laughs> One question that I have for you, Bender, is: Did you get to try PSVR two? I saw it. I did not get a chance to try. Mm, okay, okay. It, the lines were long for a lot of stuff. I basically had mm. to take advantage where I, and and test out shit where I could. Um, yeah. And Sony wasn't one of the companies who reached out to me 
uh, to to give me a private uh, <laughs> demo of it. Although I probably mm. could reach out and I mm. could have gotten one. I just mm. didn't. wasn't 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 something I was focused on while I was there. I, I honestly went to just basically cover exactly what I, I I just spoke with you guys about. Just the overall feel of what the tech industry is is focusing on in terms of you know the the, the buzzworthy stuff, what they think is the trendy stuff. Like we hear so much about all this AI stuff right now. And that was actually, there was a few AI companies there, but the stuff there was actually focused on interesting usage of like real time closed captioning. If you're like talking to someone uh, who speaks a different language, like via Zoom or something, mm. like companies that would actually translate it for you in real time and then That's do cool. the same for that person. Um, so I, that was interesting. But then you, you see what's the big AI stuff here. And it's, you know, right now everyone's talking about that chat uh, GPT that basically. Uh, tries to make you uh that gives you basically gives you whatever you want to hear it's so ridiculous how many people are falling head over heels over this thing you guys seen that whole uh chat gpt thing i did not kind of like it it kind of like write resumes and stuff too like but basically it's it sounds like just a more i don't know like a a more intelligent bot like uh, back in the day like i don't know 20 years ago a a uh, AOL Instant Messenger, did, they had like a bot like that where you could like talk to a bot and yeah. re- reply back. But now it's sort of like a more intelligent version of that where it can, right. it actually seems like a real person and it, it takes things from the internet. And so, say you want to write a, it I don't actually know, a script doesn't. in it, someone's it does voice. Not, it does not take things from the internet. It actually, it, it's, How does it work, da- it's data trained on everything that it was fed, mostly stuff on the internet, yes, but up to a certain point. Like it's not in real time searching the internet. It's using all the data that it's basically learned from and trying Mm -hmm. to formulate the best response. Like if you ask it, like if something happens in the news right now, it's not gonna be able to tell you anything about it because it hasn't been trained on that data. It's not searching the internet in real time. Um, That it's probably gonna end up changing at some point, but it's basically trained on all of our shit but shit that's already been posted up to a certain point. It's not, it's okay. not able to find out. Um, and also people are, are obsessed with it thinking that like it's outputting stuff that it's, that it knows what it's saying. Like it, it's not like machine learning is different from when we learn something like it's in taking basically what it here, what, what, what it, the user who is like typing to it is telling it, it wants to hear because they assume that's the correct version. If the user is telling them this is good, this is what I want. Um, That's why you get a lot of stuff that is factually incorrect because it doesn't know. Like if you tell it, no, that's not right, then it'll probably, at least when you talk to it, not come back with that information again because it's learning from – it's basically like a dog. Like whatever you say that makes you happy, it goes, oh, okay, I'm going to wag my tail. This is what I know this person wants to – this means I'm a good boy. Um, and then if it does something incorrect, it learns from that. It wants to make the user happy. It doesn't actually mm. have any sort of like brain that knows like, oh, this is correct because it's factual and this happened. Mm, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Which means like if you, if like, like a lot of times, like you, I see people using it to like make article, like write articles. Like, yeah. I guess if you want like a basic like template to like start from, but then you have to go through all that shit and edit it and mm-hmm. make sure what it actually gave you is correct because the facts and figures, it's just, just pulling out of thin air. It's, it's grabbing stuff that might be correct because it's looking in the same basic general area for whatever topic it is you're asking it about, but it's not like fact checking it or like learn that like oh this means that like like you know two plus two equals four and that means that this equals that it's basically just like taking from a general area and trying to under like trying to un- trying to understand what you want to hear practically so um y'all watch the golden globes <laughs> i saw clips the golden globes i, saw I clips. missed it but yeah i, I know hmm. i know what happened pretty much did y'all see gerard the the scientology um remarks did uh thoughts no, yeah, I, I was didn't too embarrassed see this. to watch. I was too embarrassed to watch that. <laughs> Are you now beautiful and we can stream things? So somebody play that. Go on Twitter. I don't think we can play. Can we play Golden Globes on YouTube? Probably not. No, you Cuts. can go, just go on Twitter. Go on Twitter and type in. Go on Twitter. Oh, let me find okay, it. Yeah. I, let me just run the mm. group chat. I got this. One second. <laughs> but what happened? <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to send it to you. 
I can't play the video though, because like I can't play Golden Globes footage, right? Like it's gonna, it's copyright problem. No, that's yeah, that, on, that's on YouTube. You're probably it's on gonna Twitter. get posted, it's a tweet. Yeah. Yeah. Honest. yeah, if you if you play footage from it, it'll probably get. Uh, I can read the text, but I, I can't. I can't play the video. Hmm. Yeah, if YouTube you play more than like copyright. ten seconds. Yeah. Like when it comes to like that kind of stuff, like award shows or like NFL, like they're super strict. When it comes to Fox, like you, you can do news because it's it's you know whatever, but uh, you can't you can't do like you know exclusive shows like award shows. Like the clip that's on Twitter. How long Twitter's, is it? Twitter's that's fine. Not, like that's Twitter. What that's what I'm. No, no, to... yeah, but but mm. that's but it's the Golden Globes posting that right. It's probably it's probably from their page. No, it's from I think Variety. It's just a tweet. It's just people post videos. Okay, all right. Well, ciao. <laughs> you, you can maybe play the audio, but when it comes to or, or, or read I'm, I'm gonna just, I'm just play it. I'm gonna just play it and and whatever. Here we go. Yeah, all yeah. Right. Put your window now. off the screen. I'm sure it's fine. I just can't. I can't play the actual video on here. All right. All right. All right. Here we go. Backstage, I found these uh, three Golden Globe awards that Tom Cruise returned. Uh, look, I'm just the host briefly or whatever, but I have a pitch. I think maybe we take these three things and exchange them for the safe return of Shelly Miskovich. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, child, he was there blowing shit up all night. He was like, fuck it, I done got paid. The check cleared. Um, <laughs> who, I swear. who is this? Gerard Carmichael. Um, oh. So, hold on. Let me try to get the tea on the Shelly Miskovich lady. Um, cause I don't David think is missing, right? Who? David is missing, but his wife was missing too, right? No, when you say David, we're, we're deep in the weeds on white people business, right? Because, like, I want, I want, to, I want, to, I want to be David. clear. I don't want you to think I have an advanced backstory knowledge of this Scientology <laughs> drama. I, I recognize this isn't even the part of the show that hypes me most. I just, I just went to what I might have made it to y'all's radar. <laughs> so I was like, ooh, right? So I'm I could the character Scientology, ooh, conspiracy, white people mad. Yeah, that's it. No, I could be totally wrong on the name, though. So I thought it was David Miskovich, as he, that was the name of the Scientology founder, and he's gone missing or something to oh, avoid some was, other well, drama. Not, not the founder. He's like the current president, I think. Oh, the president. Okay, okay. Yeah. Let's get the tea right now. Yeah, I don't know anything about hey, the, the founder all. of Scientology <laughs> is L. Ron Hubbard's the founder. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, yeah of course. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's been a while since I uh, I watched a documentary about Scientology, but it was very yeah, scary. No, but his, his his wife has been missing for a long time. Yeah, she's not been seen alive in years. Yeah, Jesus yeah, okay. Christ. So in the chat says uh, yeah. Liam yeah. says since two thousand and seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Since 2007, oh wow, that's a long time to not be seen alive. Yeah. 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 That's really crazy when you think about it, because they made all that fuss about your girl and um, the Tiger King about old boy being missing. Like that's a lot of noise to be making to just let that rock. And Robert Durst, y'all, do y'all know about Robert Durst? Yeah. Y'all know? Did y'all know about saw, Robert Durst? It was like a documentary on that, right? Robert I, Durst. Yeah, he missing snitch on himself. He missing. He, he yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he'd have got away with it too. If it weren't for that <laughs> <laughs> mouth. The mic was on. <laughs> it is in the washroom, right? Yeah, yeah. <sighs> <laughs> no, but you know, he homie like he yo, he's actually like he's lived a life. Robert Durst is really quite a character. I so I covered that trial when I first got on Long Crime News, right? So Robert Durst is this white guy that was like in Manhattan, so rich, well family of money, 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 money. So he marries this woman and then he unalives her. That's that's the that's the theory. They you know it disappears, no real proof, like blah blah blah. Kind of just kind of goes off into the wind. And every year, people are like he certainly killed her. Certainly, certainly. Then he actually they know for a fact he like cuts him, kills his neighbor. Like when he's in one of the places that he's on the run, he murders the neighbor. Another like old man like cuts his body up. All that goes to trial, convinces them that it's somehow self defense to murk this man, cut him up, take him. <laughs> I'm sorry, yo. This shit, white people get away with in court is fucking crazy. <laughs> like, you're, talking, you're, talking, you're talking about the Tiger King, right? The, the yeah. No, 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 not the Tiger King. We're gonna get back to them though. We're talking about Robert Durst. Oh, okay. We're talking about Robert Durst. And by the way, online. So then, so then he goes. He gets away with that, and he goes back off into obscurity on the run, quiet, getting away with with murder for years. Hold on, and then I think the best part is so then. 
is it boom i got it the spicy pot so then his bestie like well his bestie i guess who would know when he killed his wife all these years i don't know what he must have done to like upset shorty i don't know what happened but he kills her right he kills her leaves like a note like you know letting the people know like the spell bodies ah, blah blah makes a little call you know so they could get away getting away with that too quiet for years then hbo coming knocking and he's just like yo i i need to check his zodiac sign because it's it's, exactly it's giving, giving yeah, very yeah. leo yeah it's giving very leo he was like oh god look at it in my business oh i love that he's so fascinated by me <laughs> so he tells his bitch he tells his wife it. hey yo get him access to all my shit all my shit all that stuff there they're making an excellent documentary about me i love this this is fine fail so then all every motherfucking thing. Yeah, we'll get back to those documents. But then on the interview, he missing like I I mean, I still can't believe this shit. Like, I'm so upset for him. The defense attorney in me weeps, child. He does the interview and then he like walks out of the interview, but he's still mic'd up and he's in the bathroom grumbling like about it. just grumbling his little confession. I'm like, hey, <laughs> yo, they went and hemmed my man's up, like they went and caught him. On the on like like literally as the episode dropped, they 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 were like, come 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 come, we, we got you. And I forgot to mention earlier when he originally got caught killing the man, it was because him who had a bunch of money in his pocket just doing thrill shit. Say, let me just go to this like it was like a Walgreens. Let me just rob it. Let me just thirty six dollars of I paid it. Mad money in his pocket on the run, bro. You on the run? Like you're on the lamb. You're on the lamb. You murdered people. You could. You about to. We gonna risk it all over like thirty six dollars. He showed sure did. He showed sure the fuck did. So anyway, <laughs> my man, they put my man's on trial, and then now watch this. Every motherfucking document, because he didn't get him all that access, all that shit, all his lawyers' files, all this stuff. But now you done third partied it up because you done gave them access. Every fucking thing comes in. Everything, everything, and they really put my man's. They, they, they no, no, no solid, like no actual evidence. They still don't know no bodies, no nothing, no blah blah blah. They put my man there purely off of missing and slipping up on the HP thing and the slips and just putting his friends there like y'all know he's a killer say it say it i know you know he's a killer that's the whole trial i'm not even lying to you and then his friends that one of his friends though was like a real g like some of them was like well you know we kind of know but maybe he's with our friends for a long time one of them was kind of just like fuck you i'm not answering nothing <laughs> yeah, like it's like nothing was weird to me i ain't seen him i ain't know he killed up did i was i there <laughs> like i was like oh that's a fuck. <laughs> and everybody was talking shit and i wanted to talk shit but like in my heart of hearts i was like that's a real nigga for real like yeah like if i'm if i'm old if i'm a senior citizen like i have very little years left if my this my boy has been my boy all this time he's a killer all this time he ain't never killed me but even my homie this whole time rocking with my boy. And he really did. They they brought them there to trial. And he really stood 10 toes down. But they convicted my mans. And I'm heated about it. I mean, I'm so sick about it. And I can't remember, I can't remember how we got here. But I wanted you all to know. I, it's, it's important. That's the story of Robert Durst. I forgot all about that story. But th th that was a good the documentary. Jinx. Yeah. <laughs> it was on. yeah, The yeah, Jinx. That's the jinx. right. Yeah, yeah. The what is it called again? The Jinx. Um, the Jinx. And I tried oh, okay. to But your team, Robert Durst? The guy who made the Jinx went in there testifying <laughs> against him, and I still hated that shit. Like, I think that's so trifling. Like, I'm like, bro, you know you was currying favor with him to come make your thing, but you acting all above. I can't stand that. How you you all in this business enough to be following it, to be making your little bag, doing your little documentary, your whole little show. Now you want to act like you morally above him, like all this condemnation and judgment. It wasn't all that fucking judgment when he was sitting across him, interviewing him, trying to get a bag. Punk ass! Now you testify it all voluntarily. I was like, the guy like, kill the guy's a murderer. That's like that's their <laughs> job. They're documentary. They're making documentary. Lance, first of all, Lance, you missed the Christmas all, episode where, where Ole defended her 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 uh, friends that are murderers. <laughs> first of all, oh. first of all, I want to let that. <laughs> Nobody said I got friends that are murderers, but I said it would be fine if and they did. That's first of all. Second of all, the only murder they know he did. They that they know he did, they know without a shadow of a doubt he fucking did. They acquitted that nigga on self defense. Everything else is speculation. You don't know that. You don't know that. You never seen her. You don't know what happened. They don't know. They don't well, know. It's, it's like OJ. You got to get him on something else, right? Like that's that's what it is. Like we we you know he's guilty. 
So you that missed was, it the first time, but you got to go back and <laughs> get up and for something some, else. And that was some bullshit too, but that was some excellent This, this was the Christmas the special. <laughs> that we're doing. Yeah, this no, I absolutely, special. and I maintain, I want to, I want to, I want to double down on all my comments about Ryan from my friends who may or may not like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I'm like, listen, y'all don't know nothing but a safe space, okay? It's called unconditional love. Learn about it. Thank you. Thank you. My friends are loved, okay? They know they can call me and it's going to be good. Like, at most, I'd be like, Ooh. <laughs> let's get on an encrypted line. <laughs> I mean, I have friends that I would definitely uh, believe if they told me, like, oh, I didn't do it. I'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I believe you. And then it would most certainly turn out, oh, yeah, I did that. <laughs> and then I'd be like, but what? Oh, like, but, you mean, Lance, but you wouldn't stop being their friend, right, Lance? It depended on what it was. I mean, like, I would hope they found restorative justice, but if it was really bad, I mean, if they had, like, you know, sexually assaulted a bunch of people, I wouldn't be like, well, I definitely need to rekindle this friendship, or this is worth saving, you know? I'd be like, yeah, no. I, I mean, I... Okay, well, I David was a peace. full-on yeah. narc. David's a narc. <laughs> if my friend's a piece of shit, you. I'm not going to be a piece of shit with them. Fuck that. No. no. I, 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 I love you, right? I love you. I just want y'all to understand, should we ever be crimey? Dave is the first person you have to eliminate. He's done it now. I, I love him. It's not about like, please let us solitary care for when we eliminate David. But you have to eliminate David. It is a mistake. You will be just gone. Don't tell me. Just don't tell me. If you did it, just don't tell me. That's all. It's just it's a bad idea. Don't give me your secrets. No, trust me. I know you ain't got to tell me twice. <laughs> like, I, I feel like I feel like Lance is the most likely to to stand by me in the event of a crime. Like that's my that's what my heart of hearts tells nah, me. No, nah. he give you. You think so? <laughs> Who's the most likely? He'd, he'd, he'd give you us. Us Canadians. Canadians. Canadians, Canadians, Canadians respect Lord. people that that are good. That 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 don't murder people. That don't do bad things to other that's individuals. All we do is genocide. Did you do genocide, Lance? <laughs> we're the, I'm talking about we're the good ones here. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> we're the good ones. First of all, you're the ops. Okay, I, like, whatever, whatever role you want to assign to the ops, you have at it. But you are the ups okay like no i Can't think deny, it, i don't know this is going to devolve into an americans versus canadian stream and that's very dangerous no, no, we, we can't, no, we can't. Honestly, no a bahamians versus whatever the rest everybody else is clearly <laughs> i'm the realest nigga on this team i'm the only person y'all have a problem call me <laughs> no yes no yeah keto they not gonna get it you right you right keto <laughs> <laughs> but um, how did we get there? So Golden Globe, Scientology. Did y'all hear Eddie Murphy? No. I, it, it's crazy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, with the Will Smith comment? Yes. That whole thing? Yeah, yeah. What did he say? It was like a joke. It was, just, it was a joke. It was a little joke. He's oh, like, okay. there's like three things you have to know in, in me... life. <laughs> All right, pl play it. I'm just afraid we're going to get copyright striked. <laughs> what are they going <laughs> to do? Keeping a, gonna I'm do? keeping an eye on the YouTube just in case. Wait, From somebody said saying... Mike would help dig a hole in the woods for you. No, I would not. I would never be complicit in murder. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> How do you think of Olay? Olay would help you dig the Mike, hole. All of it's that so is crazy depends because depends on who, depends on when, you, depends you, on what. You, you, There's you a lot of factors, you know? Y'all, you see why y'all can't beat the charges? They be trying to let you get to that person. That person was trying to help you, Mike. Like, they were trying to help. Help you like they were trying to paint you. Mike said, Oh, heavens, no! <laughs> I would <laughs> not. Please, please do not for one second think I am calling the police. <laughs> like, like, and bring it closer. That's pretty good. I you know, this was the, the least watched Golden Globes ever. <laughs> oh, no kidding. <laughs> it was like 6 million viewers or something. Yeah, it was like a lot lower than uh, 
like they usually hit like 20 million or something crazy, but it was like under 6 million. Oh, wow. Um, yes. Evan, Evan, Evan you are anymore. a hater. <laughs> Evan DeVries, you are a hater. I just wanted to call you out in real time that you are a hater. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, yeah, I think in fairness to them, or right? haven't all the award shows, viewership's been going down year by year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know. It's just known, people don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're yeah. all kind of masturbatory, right? It's just like a whole yeah. bunch of super famous rich people give each other awards. It's mm -hmm. uh, cool. Yeah, yeah. I don't even care about the streamies, which is supposed to be, I guess, kind of our space. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. E I I couldn't tell you who won, who lost. I, I just, I feel like, yeah, like Lance was saying, these are all masturbatory. People are auto filleting themselves on stages. I, it just, it feels like an elitist circle jerk. And I never watch it. But if there is something that's noteworthy, then I'll see the clips. Like the uh, Will Smith slap at whatever the, that was. The Golden Globes or the Grammys or some shit. Um, but I never tune in live. I, I don't think I... The last time I watched it was like a little kid. I don't know. I hate yeah, him. I don't remember watching it. I don't, I don't think I've ever watched like, the Golden Globes. I, I watch, you know, I've watched like the BET Awards and certain ones here and there, but no, I see the clips. Um, mm -hmm. I saw Abbott Elementary cleaned up. I was very happy about that. I need to see that. I still haven't watched that. You haven't seen Abbott Elementary? No, I just I just finished House of the Dragon, and so I'm going to transition into a new show, so I might start Abbott Elementary. I've heard so many good things about it. Right. Okay, I love that. All right, Abbott Elementary is great. You need to watch that. Okay, I meant to say that today. I, I thought about this earlier. Um, when if I ever go to Canada, I am we. I'm sitting down and making Lance watch Degrassi, and we are live streaming it. That is what's oh, happening. God. Yeah, that, that's the whole thing. That sounds terrible. Of all that sounds wonderful. That, stream. that sounds that terrible. sounds amazing. <laughs> that sounds really amazing. I actually love that. <laughs> so next you time ha you have to watch '80s Degrassi though. The new generation is just not the same. Wait, there's thing, a new Degrassi. But... There's like there's two Degrassi. I think that's the one Ole's talking Degrassi. about. The, the... <laughs> there's like the next generation whatever the hell it's called that that was like the 2000s one the actual original 80s Degrassi that I have that on DVD that's the shit that this, that's that's this, that's the good Degrassi this is how this, this is powerful this right here is, is incredibly powerful because this this is a telling moment about age because there are like two different classes of Degrassi like Degrassi. There's like I think it's like three now or something. Yeah, yeah. bro. After the, to, the, to call to be talking about oh, the two thousands Degrassi, like that's not solidified. Like that's not an OG Degrassi. It's no, the eighties Degrassi. No, not... What year were you born, David? That's the uh, uh, eighty five. I didn't watch it when it was on. I watched it when I was older. And I, I, you know, it was on like Showcase or whatever the hell channel it was on. But um, yeah. Uh, is that the Drake one? The original. The Drake one is is uh, the two thousands one. It is the the first, the first one of the new ones. That, that that's Drake's. How many Degrassi's are there, bro? The, there was the one in the eighties, and they spent like ten years gap, and then there was like a bunch of new ones. The new, there's the old new ass eighties Degrassi that nobody but David is coming. What are you? That's the <laughs> most popular one. <laughs> no, no, that's the most popular one. It's not bro. even close. I'm looking this up. The most popular one. three. No, that's bro. the. No, I right. guarantee no. you, that's the, the most. Two thousands, no. Two thousands. Degrassi, Paige, Jimmy, Ashley, Craig, Manny, Emma. That's the. That's the. That's the one. Come on. Eighties. I was like in college when that was on. I'm not gonna watch Degrassi Five. in college. I was like in college when I think, that, and I think that's what this is really about. I okay. wish like, if you, were, you ever watch, y'all ever watch, um, Inside? In, is it is it Inside Out with their in their mind with the emotions? Yes. That's yeah. yeah the, yes. That's a good. It, that's a good. That's a good movie. movie. Y'all remember what wait, I, I wait, before before we leave Degrassi? I I need to know how we're not many leaving Degrassi. You all think there's there's no way all of you know how many Degrassi series there actually were. Like guess I, I want I want to hear your numbers. I I, I do. Wait, we mean so seasons I, or do we mean like different groups of people? Different television series. Different series. There's, I'm gonna say like six. The original Degrassi, Degrassi Next Generation, and then Degrassi Next Class. Um, yeah. I think That's there's more of them. Maybe. There's like one between them. Yeah, I think like six. There's one in between them. I'm gonna okay, guess so eleven. I, I have no idea. <laughs> so, so we have eleven, six. I think it's any, like any other numbers. Is that it? There's, there's, there's junior high. There's high. Those are the two of the '80s ones. 
Then there's the new so, generation. Then there's probably like six. Telev television series, The Kids of Degrassi Street, Degrassi Junior High, Degrassi High, Degrassi Some of those don't Generation, count. Degrassi <laughs> Next Class, Degrassi Cancelled. Then there was a web series called Degrassi Minis. Then they there was a television count. special called Degrassi Talks. I don't then count. there were not those one, count. not two, but three films <laughs> made for TV called Schools Out, Degrassi Goes Hollywood, and Degrassi Takes Manhattan. That uh, is I have, so much I have schools high, out on I have schools out on DVD. It's good. <laughs> Y'all remember how the elephant in Inside Out? You remember the elephant? You remember it fades away, oh, the pink so... elephant? They forget. It's like twenty years ago. I don't know. Oh vaguely. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm. That's what I'm doing to David right now in my mind. As I continue to talk about real, what makes sense about the grassy. No one I can. <laughs> You have no. There are there are insanely obsessed people with Degrassi, with the original Degrassi. They go to like the school that it was shot at. There's like a whole this events like around this shit. It's it's a whole thing. I'm telling you, <laughs> bro. I've never, <laughs> never in my never in my black ass life have I ever wanted to say okay, boomer. But just now I heard it in my mind. <laughs> in my mind, I like jumped to the recesses of my mind for some age and shit to say. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I wish there was a way to like properly like showcase the most popular Degrassi, but there probably isn't. I don't know. <laughs> a poll. I'm gonna poll it. We're gonna poll it on the on the I'm a, I'm a poll it. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. This is important. I didn't include the novels or the graphic novels. We don't need to do oh, there's graphic novels? Okay. There's graphic Anyways, novels. what happened in the news this week? Right? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of podcast is this? I know. I'm completely I, I, out I, of I the appreciate loop. everybody in the chat talking about 80s to grassy also mentioned in your age. That's really important. I love that. I like just the not to make any arguments or comments, just the back up earlier claims levied by me um, as it as it comes to that particular viewpoint. <laughs> Oh. George Santos had his first kiss on Degrassi. Love it. Oh, sorry. I didn't know it would show automatically. Um, I have this Ben Shapiro clip. Want to watch this? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Well, this is going to be good. I was being afraid there. I'm glad that at least some of these M&Ms will have nuts to represent the transgender community. So you have to ensure that some of the M&Ms are actual, are actual trans Parker. women. You wouldn't want these to be cisgender M&Ms. He's so proud so of that news. joke. Some of the yeah. Female oh, M&Ms will, in fact, have nuts. The move is the latest in a series of marketing moves M&Ms has made to promote... Did you want to say something, Scarlett? Previous announcements involved. Yeah, the the purple. If, the, if the purple uh, M&M is a trans woman because it has a nut, it's a nut M&M, doesn't that mean, like, the red one's a, a trans man because it doesn't have a nut? <laughs> one <can make laughs> By his logic, yes. There's no consistency to mention here. <laughs> yeah, yeah purple female M&M who represents body positivity and self-acceptance. Well, I'm sure M&M would love people to accept body positivity because you eat enough of them and you get fat. That is what they are. They are a candy. Early in 2022, <laughs> Mars announced it would alter its mascots to reflect the more dynamic, progressive world we live in, saying the refreshed M&M's brand will include a more modern take on the looks of our beloved characters. So that's exciting. Mars Wrigley North America Chief Marketing Officer Gabrielle Wesley explained the move, quote, Women all over the world are flipping how they define success and happiness while challenging the status quo. So we are thrilled to be able to recognize and celebrate them. And who better to help us on that mission than our own powerhouse, Spokes Candies, green, brown, and purple. Oh, <laughs> so moving. So incredible. Show so unbelievably are. stupid. <laughs> right, yeah. Right. Women, do you feel represented now because of the green, purple, and brown M&Ms on the M&M package that you're guzzling down lonely in your apartment with your wine and your cat? How's that, how's that going for you? He gets real amazing, uh, amazing. sexist but here, like brutal sexist. Yeah, like he he's like so giddy yeah. about his his own commentary that he he like he thinks he's hilarious, and right. the jokes here ma he's making are like I don't know sexist jokes from like eighty years ago. Yeah, That's they're too outdated thing. for like my grandfather. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honestly, I'm mostly just happy because if it's an all female M and M, I assume that it costs seventy seven cents on the dollar of what the regular M and Ms would cost, right? But I'm yeah, that's how this works. Also, uh, do not ask the uh, female M Ms for directions. Oh, okay, me it's just not going to go particularly well. Right? Like you, how twenty twenty three? Yeah, yeah what nineteen eighty stand up style sexism? Who, who even? At, we all have phones with maps. Like, who's asking for directions? This is so stupid. Corporate America, man, filled with morons. But 
until there are alternatives, this is what we're going to have to suffer with. So I suppose we're going to have to launch Jeremy's candy or something. What are we suffering with? Like, with the, the the fucking candy or right. don't? Like only you want to talk about the M and M marketing <laughs> campaign? Like, what if, like yo, when you when you think like, bro, you're a fucking loser. <laughs> like, what is like? Yeah. What? By the way, has Tucker Carlson reacted to this? Because do you remember when they redesigned the M M&M and made them less sexy in 2022? I Tucker did, Carlson I, was I, very I mad. Object. He was super. He did object. It. I'm not a loser, so I wasn't anywhere levying commentary about about the M and M's and what they decided. <laughs> they decided to do their fucking cartoon M and M's, like a nigga, really. But I will say the the green and the brown M and M's were always some bad bitches, and I didn't appreciate trying to take any of that drip. Like I was like, oh, listen, like, <laughs> my girl, like I don't understand who asks for this. Like why why my bitches can't have their heels? They've been popping for decades. Why I don't why I don't get on their agenda? But I. I understand that they are M and M's. They are cartoon, cartoon candy, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it doesn't matter what is done with them. <laughs> exactly, I, that's the thing. It's, these are all these are just corporations that are trying to do whatever they think is going to be popular in the moment. And like to I, you know, not to Ben Shapiro's point, but just to like this is what corporations do, right? But this is not like to get so outraged. Over a marketing campaign for M and M's, how is there? Isn't there anything else going on? Like, how are you so? How can anyone be so invested in this? And it was him. I think Matt Walsh. I think also did a video. Like, the, the, this is this is the the stuff there. Tucker they're Carlson did on. a whole special about it. Yeah, yeah, and and also this week, uh, don't forget the controversy surrounding uh, the new Batman comics where Joker was pregnant. And this to them was very, very um, offensive because, of course, men can't get pregnant. Now, what's funny is I I think it was Joe Concha. He was on Fox News explaining this. He's like, well, it's not like Joker is trans, so they're not pushing that. But it's still woke because the Joker has become the (laughs) wokester because he's pregnant. Now, the way he actually admits the way that the Joker got pregnant was because (laughs) pregnancy is woke. But Joker got (laughs) pregnant because of a curse. So it's not like the character is even trying to promote like There's LGBTQ plus people. He just like got pregnant because he was cursed by somebody else with special powers. Um, and they were very mad about that. Uh, it's just, I, I, I love up. the world we're living in where this is American politics and this is what they focus on. It's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this He's is the monster. explanation. Wow. Oh, and the best part is that as they were talking about this, this uh, image was on the side the whole time, basically. They kept going between this and another image, and it was great, just like somebody's head up Joker's crotch. And they were talking about how offensive it was. Oh it, my was God. it was wonderful. I have a video coming out on Saturday. We talked about this on my, on my Twitch stream. Um, I love all the things that conservatives keep getting frustrated about. Uh, I don't know if you all followed the controversy surrounding big government, coming to take your gas stoves, <laughs> but they are convinced that yeah. somebody's going to show up at your door and they're going to take that fucking stove right out of your house. Um, it's it's really great. All, all of this stemmed from one individual uh, following the release of a study showing that they kind of increased the risk of asthma in children by like 13%. So it's really substantial, right? And so the uh, Consumer Protection Agency announced that it was... Uh, going to look into this or something like that or even consider banning it it made a relatively banal statement uh but they took that as oh well if you have a gas stove now you're breaking the law and this is the wokeness they're going to come and take your gas stove which they wouldn't do that it would be grandfathered in it'd be like they're not going to sell new gas stoves if if anything at all i'd be surprised if they even do anything about this but like yeah out of of curiosity how many of you have gas stoves versus like electric like let's do a gas gas stove I've yeah. guessed, I've rent though. It's not like I installed it. Uh, I, I'm um, gonna get canceled over this. I've only ever had electric an electric stove, and it's mm. been fine. I can boil water. I can make food. <laughs> That's not a problem. The gas <laughs> Some people claim fire or no? I, you know, yeah, I'm cooking. So mm-mm. I have the other one then. Mm-hmm. Um, listen, I just I'm don't I'm not convinced that it's not a mistake 
to let Republicans distract us with this nonsense. Because that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Like, right? It's always so stupid and comically stupid. And like we respond and we're like, oh my God, that's so fucking stupid. But it's like, are we not just helping these niggas like like share this, propagandize this, make this like larger and louder? Because who would have known this foolishness? Because that's ultimately what it is. They want to distract from some other substantive conversation. And so the minute before you could even really get a peek on that, and then it's now, okay, now we talking about ha ha joke, 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 gas stove. I said something, 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 and now it's gonna be that. They don't. They don't need our help because they set. They set the narratives. Like mm -hmm. they have the platforms. They have because they have so many billion uh, billions of dollars behind them. We're, like we're talking even like you know bench like small YouTube shows or ones that would appear to be small. We're talking about billionaire backers behind them, which is why we all know about them. So they they're the ones that set the agenda. And then you, uh, I think I know there's been studies on this. There's there's data showcasing this where whatever like Fox News is covering then that ends up being what MSNBC and CNN end up covering. So right. they already they already set these like we're already in the discussion. But, but that's, um, my, that's kind of that's kind of my point, right? They they're allowed yes, they set the discussion but you, yes us responding to it and continue it and that makes it become the discourse because we all jump on it right like do we hear about like of course fox news and all these people and they tune into that and they're gonna say all their stupidness and that that but for the purpose of putting it under the air as much as they're peddling it amongst themselves and they're all eager what they really want is for us to all be plugged into what is their discussion and you don't really hear there are people who don't care about this shit until we bring it to them you see what i'm saying like if we don't okay. have certain conversations we don't we kind of bring we help bring their things out of you know, and I, I obviously I don't mean like us. We don't start it, right? Obviously, it already happened. Mm -hmm. MSNBC, these different places. Oh yeah, I mean, all fall in line. If I if I had power over MSNBC and CNN, I would not be impacted by Fox News at all. I would like just completely ignore whatever they're doing, whatever they're talking about, and and set your own agenda for those mm -hmm. those networks. Um, and yeah, I, I agree with you on that. On yeah, on that, like that's that that's what I, ends up happening. My, my point with this though is, I think that. Their biggest complaint is that these corporations have, quote, gone woke, and now they're just trying to appeal to uh, demographics uh, to score points or whatever that is. Um, that's the kind of a nightmare of their own design, because, like, no one would be talking about this on either side if they weren't actually getting outraged about it. it it's kind of like people would just be like, like, have you ever bought candy based on the packaging since you were nine? Like, have you ever walked by and like, oh, the logo looks good on this one time for this bar? Like, no one does that. Like, well, no adult does that. Children do that. But otherwise, none of us are buying candy based on how performative, uh, you know, the rainbow wash is on the logo or something like that. Yeah. Mm hmm. Which is why, also, I mean, that MS that that, that uh, M and M conversation isn't really getting traction. I mean, except to laugh at it, as opposed to like to your point, as opposed to the stove conversation, which actually is getting traction because people like their gas stoves for whatever reason. <laughs> like, so it bothers them the idea that they can't have it. Before I forget this, I do want to say I saw that Sarah Huckabee Sanders is like making some waves and has passed some like great measures so far. They are culture war bullshit that helped nobody. One of them is banning CRT in schools, which great, you banned a thing that isn't taught in elementary school already. So that one does nothing. And the other one was to ban the word Latinx. So it's kind of like the right has dominated the culture war uh, outrage porn. Fine, you get that. That's your little treat, your toy. You can go play with that. But it, in terms of like actually doing things for voters or getting anything for the citizens who brought you to power, it it's it's nothing. It's empty. It's a vessel, right? Like, what what good is that going to do for the average person if you don't teach a thing that wasn't taught? People in Arkansas just can't stop saying Latinx. Good thing she. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> good thing she did this. Yeah, this there's like, how do I want to phrase this? Like, they do go above and beyond to just control the narrative. But I do think that that matters to an extent. Like I talked about on this program, like there's a on my show anyways, there's a bill from Oklahoma that um, they're trying to ban transitioning uh, for anyone under the age of 26. And so if you've already transitioned, then you are forcibly going to have to detransition. And it's just one of the most draconian, vehemently, violently transphobic bills ever. But the question is like how... This probably isn't going to pass, but they're still doing it anyway. But I think that the fact that they even like introduced it, that still does like I think that does matter because, you know, it, it sets the tone and other kind you know, other states might want to want to follow on that. So this is something that I saw Aaron Reach, who's a really popular trans activist, talk about like um, there's this debate about how much should we focus on all of these bills? Because they're getting more ridiculous as time goes on. Like the anti-trans bills, for example, not just with this issue, but other issues too, where they're not going to pass. Like House Republicans are passing abortion bans. Uh, so like how much do you focus on this? And I do think that that's 
a pretty good question. Um, and that's what I wanted to ask Scarlett about too, which is why uh, I wanted to bring you on because there is like the bills are getting more ridiculous. Um, every single week there's a new bill. And last year there was like 300 plus anti-trans bills um, or over the last two years, I should say. Um, and even if some of them don't have a chance of passing, I do still think that it's, that it's harmful, but like, to what extent do we dwell on this as opposed to like a different issue? Yeah. I, I disagree with the people who say that we shouldn't be worrying about these. <clears throat> and like, actually the Oklahoma bill, I mean, well, there's, there's more than one bill, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I, it's probably the, the riskiest situation in the country right now. I think they're the most likely to pass. Uh, they have four, I think, anti-trans anti -trans bills. Actually, I shared my screen earlier, but let me... Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. I can bring that up. What I had earlier is something different, but I can show okay. you just like a uh, legislative tracker. Um, that's Alejandra Car Carabello. Oh, uh, this is helpful. Evan, and this is all the anti-trans bills that are really proposed. She's been updating it, like, live. and She's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, she's really great. Um. So you can see there's a lot <laughs> just Jesus like Christ. Wow. every day. I mean, a lot of this was <clears throat> very recently, like over the past couple of days. Um, there's like eight bills in Virginia. There's like, I think like 10 in Texas. And like, I mean, you can see this up here that counts them. Gender affirming care ban, 34, trans force ban, so on. Yeah, there's... <laughs> An increasing amount, increasing boldness in terms of what they ban, because a lot of these basically ban trans people from existing. Right. Drag, drag bans are just like, they're worded in a way to make it so that it's illegal to be a trans person who is observable by anybody. So it just bans you from existing outside of your house in any public space. Like you can be in your house. They can't, they, you know, they're not trying to ban you inside your home yet, but. Yeah, what is the language that they used? I forgot who tweeted about this, but it was a specific drag ban that was so um, vaguely worded that it would end up uh, extending to trans people. Because, I mean, I don't know if they don't know the difference between a drag person or they somebody have, who does drag. Um, they absolutely know the difference. Yeah, <laughs> they, yeah. They just want everybody together. Because, and they, they intentionally write it this way to make it so that it can be possibly applied to anybody. And, you know, if mm -hmm. it gets overturned, or if something doesn't hold up in courts, whatever. They're just trying to harass people. So <laughs> they already got that job done, even if all they do is get them arrested and then have the, the court um, dismiss it. But yeah, uh, I mean, there's there's one in, in most of these states. So I, in terms of what the language is, it depends on which state you're talking about. But it's usually very broad and just says stuff like any sort of performance done by a person who is a gender who is presenting an agenda that's not their assigned gender at birth. And like all these bills define it too. Actually, I could go to Virginia one because I did read through mm. this. <clears throat> um, yeah, they don't ban uh, drag shows, but they do like per, um, define, you know, what your gender at birth is in the law. And like, that's the other thing is that they're, <clears throat> all of these bills require a definition for sex and gender mm. and uh they basically all attempt to redefine it in a way that undoes your sort of you know your legal side of transitioning all of the birth certificate changes and you know, id changes are basically undone because it, the law then starts to say like instead of um your birth certificate it, it says it has to match your birth certificate as it was originally issued when you were born so if you get it amended it doesn't matter basically um jesus hmm. do you know so is it, there any uh, oh sorry go ahead david i was gonna say is there anything that could have been done while democrats had the majority to to prevent uh states from doing this like enshrine these rights into law would that have, is that like is there any way to stop this uh, like uh, i'm asking because the, this this is, this is going to be an ongoing issue, right? Like they're they're going to continue trying to do this in various ways until they simply cannot do it because of whatever laws in place that prevents them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to some extent. I mean, like this is, a, I think, a culture war issue that they were going to bring up at some point eventually, like inevitably, because <clears throat> you know, this is what the right always does. They have to use a divide and conquer strategy. Uh, 
anytime they sort of they lose the majority, they have to divide the other side, and they've gone through a bunch of things. And you know, like gay marriage is is it, or gay rights is acceptable enough to older people that they need to demonize something else. And so, like trans people were just the next logical thing, especially since by demonizing trans people, you can also like demonize gay people by association, mm -hmm. uh, which is what we see. And yeah, I don't know that there's anything that Democrats could have specifically passed that would have prevented this sort of backlash. I think it would be better if they were more vocal about pushing back on things. I mean, like mm -hmm. Democrats, I haven't heard very many of them and very many elected officials point out that, you know, there is an ongoing uh, <laughs> movement to just harass queer people. Uh, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I don't know, has Biden ever mentioned lives of TikTok or like what's going on with, with Twitter? Like this, this sort of mm -hmm. moral panic stuff, it gets created by media. It's not like we don't know what, what what causes this stuff. It's happened before. It's the media that's allowing this to happen. I mean, Twitter is now just a, a cesspool of hatred. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, and, like, and it's, it's a problem. Mm, Sorry, yeah, yeah, and it's gotten worse since Elon's taken over. Like I, the the amount of oh my god, I had Don Jr. recommended to my Twitter timeline like several times this mm -hmm. week. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I, mean, I got to mute this guy. This is ridiculous. Like, mm -hmm. what's going on here? And I never get recommended anyone on the left. Like, it's it's gotten never. And, and now Ken Klippenstein's getting he's getting like ghosted on Twitter. Like search it, banned. It, yeah, search banned. It's yeah. It's, this is an ongoing. Yeah, I'm also uh, getting unfollow or I'm yeah. unfollowing my account is unfollowing other leftist accounts, and I see nothing but right wingers on my feed. Matt Walsh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, um, all the time. And then certain leftists that I follow, I don't see. Like I was um, unfollowed by a good politic guy, and I'm sure it was a glitch because I followed him, and then like an hour later, it unfollowed him again. So something fucked up is happening. But like when it comes to the algorithm, it's certainly pushing more um, right wing content. So sure. yeah, it's it, Twitter has gotten worse. W one thing that I really wanted to ask Scarlett was um, for me, I'm always careful about like my language when I talk about trans issues and I don't want to be too hyperbolic because I don't want to make people or give people the sense that like, oh, he's trying to embellish and be hysterical. But like, when do we start using the genocide word with the GOP? Because like, that's where we're at, where it feels like they literally want a genocide against trans people. I mean, these bills are erasing them mm -hmm. from uh, existence legally. Uh, there's eliminationist language spoken just plainly on, on right wing television. Like, do you think it's too hyperbolic to say um, genocide? No, I've been telling my family that, you know, we have a, a movement to genocide trans people in this country uh, for maybe a year now. I mean, like, it is genocidal. And some of the things that I didn't mention were is these gender affirming care bans, a lot of them uh, in that document are, are, are for minors. But a lot of them seek to expand the definition of minor because they want to ban it for everyone. So some of them, and one of them in Virginia, uh, bans care up to the age of 21. It's another bill somewhere else in the country, I forget where, that goes all the way up to age 25. And I've seen people online arguing that your brain is not even fully developed till you're 30. So that's when you're an adult. And so they just want to really ban it for everyone. Um, and they know that, like, you know, they, they uh, uh, pretending you don't know what you're doing is, is a really common and powerful tool. <laughs> um, yeah. And, like, they, they know that by banning this sort of healthcare, they're going to not only just cause suicides to increase, but they are literally killing people because there are people who need hormones. Once you've had certain surgeries, you need hormones to stay alive. And by making it so that they're not going to have that means that you're directly impacting their health. And if it goes on long enough, they will die from it. So like, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. If you have your testicles removed, then you need to have estrogen. Right. Yeah, and I'm to the point where um, before I used, and I talked about this on the show before too, like I would try to lay out all the facts, give them the studies, like, okay, for when it comes to trans youth, gender affirming care decreases suicide by X amount. Um, but it's evident now they, they literally don't care. Like they know that at this point, like they know, and the goal is to eliminate them. So of course, if they see that like trans kids are going to kill themselves, I think that they want that literally. And that might seem like overly cynical, but that's genuinely what, what I believe at this point. 
I mean, that is what it is. Like that's that's just a reality. I say it's a mistake yeah. all the time to to approach GOP nonsense and their propaganda campaigns and things like this as though it's legitimate or it's culture wars or any of this nonsense. At the end of the day, the way power is created and maintained is by subjugating other. You know what I mean? There has to be somebody mm -hmm. to subjugate. And the way you do that is by manufacturing consent in society. And obviously, we've seen larger shifts in social consciousness that make it harder to attack certain groups, right? Like, we're more in the room. If you do certain things to, you say certain things to black people, there's likely somebody there. You do certain things to women, there's likely somebody there. You say certain things about what is your uh, uh, standard uh, uh, person they think of as a gay person, there's somebody there. But if there's a trans person, very often they're not present. There isn't a seat at the table so it was easier to get people to get on board with ostracizing other ostracizing something that you're convincing them is a unicorn or is not there so it allows them to say okay all this bigotry that you weren't receiving so popularly all the other things we usually rally around right the the country's more more pro-choice than ever before the country's more pro-gay marriage the country's more pro um um gay relationships so like scarlet said yeah it's easier it's an easier target and that's all it's about and they know something i think that's important to remember and all of these things have combined is they know that what they're saying is misinformation they know it's incorrect they know what they're peddling that's factual whenever tucker calls and any of these things get taken to court the first thing they do is go what uh, hey hey reasonable minds at the table we all fucking know that we're not being dead ass that's for those fucking idiots out there they have an obvious obvious agenda and that's why when they see okay people are people are finding new channels new ways twitter social media these uh, independent shows new ways to get new information out there to challenge these things to shift social consciousness they say Let's find a way to prevent that because they know that if the information is actually there, more people hear it. Let's actually just cut off those channels altogether. That's why you see a concerted effort to get books out of there. They they coax it as oh, critical race and all this. But really, no, 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 no. Let's get all that shit out of there. Everything that we think is contributing to to opening people's eyes. You heard them just the other day when they defined what they see woke is. That's what they see it is. They see it as okay. People are being informed about the things. People are receiving the truth, and that is not going to help us justify get this consent for the bigotry that we need to be able to um, implement on somebody in order to maintain our power. So they say, you know what, let's do it on who they don't know as much about yet. We've had, you know, the, uh, the LGBT movement, especially as far as just gay, lesbians, bisexual, has grown exponentially in terms of what is our regular public social consciousness awareness. That's been happening. So they're like, okay, okay, what do they know less about? What is much easier to stigmatize? What haven't they gotten the info out there about yet? trans people and shut that shit down shut all the info out sub the books get the laws do it do it do it before they know anything about it because that allows us to continue doing what we've been doing it's just a concerted campaign to continue the same bigotry they've been doing since jump street mm -hmm. yeah and it's easy too to as Scar scarlet was saying like they went from gay to trans just because that's logical uh, and, and it's easy because you just have to copy and paste like literally the same things that they argued against gay people they're now now arguing against trans people and the parallels are so they're so evident like there's even like there was an ex gay movement now there's detransitioners um and the 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 detransitioner proportions are very small um and a lot of them who do detransition they do so because of like social stigma but like the right will latch onto those people in the same way that the ex gays were brought on to delegitimize queer people and whatnot also by the way like those detransitioners just like the ex gays not really not trans anymore <laughs> right right and one of them I, i'm blanking on their name uh was like the darling of the uh the transition movement but came out as trans once again uh i can't i did a video on them i'm what think motivate it, what motivates that like i don't well, there's a online on. they got radicalized online but sorry go yeah. ahead like people get you know um, sort of pushed out of the, the queer community and then they seek like another community and there's this there's a group mm. of bigots looking to take that opportunity basically is, is what it comes down to and I mean a lot of these people are sad and depressed and uh, maybe even have mental issues and like they're being given an opportunity to be famous and make money and have a mm -hmm. bunch of friends supporting them like I don't know it's, it's a good deal if you feel like a total loser yeah, yeah. It, it pays to throw your own community under the bus too i mean look at dave rubin look at blair white the shit that they say is completely ridiculous like i have no doubt in my mind that they don't believe the things that they say like even blair white she made some tweet uh, about how 
if <laughs> yeah something about five oh they think that five-year-olds uh can yeah. change their gender when she was on joe rogan and what did she say when he asked her she's like oh well around five that's when i realized that i was uh, a girl it's like so they're literally lying on purpose just for a check it's it's the most disgusting thing ever because i could never imagine like throwing my own community under a bus just for a check it's like like the most egregious thing ever like i almost not respect but like appreciate the people who just hate us because they fucking hate us not the ones who are doing it for a check because at least that's authentic right like it, it just it's so craven it's infuriating it's like the most pathetic thing in the world i have no respect for any detransitioners on on that cloud game or a grip grip game when did that yeah. rogan, when did that rogan thing happen i want to i want to check that one out that's pretty crazy maybe I mean, a year year crazy, so? pretty incredible yeah, it was like a year ago yeah. or so. Wow, yeah, like yeah. I might have even done a video about this because it was it was just such a huge like hypocrisy moment where it's like, oh my god, did you did you not remember saying this? Because like for me, like I I always like kind of have the same story. I I don't change my story when I talk about coming out. I came out at twenty two, realized I was different when I was like five years old. So it's not like she like if she talked about her experience. How do you not remember that you mentioned that part? Because it's just yet they continue on grifting somehow. They they were they keep they stay relevant even though they've been exposed for being full of shit. Like it, that that's what I'm, like Mike. If if you were caught in some kind of like you got your story wrong somehow along the line, you know some Jimmy Dore fans would have found it and like exposed you. Be like, look at you lie. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but like but like you know, like career <laughs> over. <laughs> like, yeah. Meanwhile, you have these high 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 profile individuals in in conservative media just exposed again and again and again and they maintain and they get more popular it's it, the whole thing is wild to me that they're able to yeah. maintain their audience yeah and then every now and then you'll get like a dave rubin who just gets devoured by the leopards you know like you, like sometimes i like, really feel bad for him but wow it is vicious it's like uh yeah we had a couple of children with the surrogate and it's like well you're burning in hell now yeah there, there is no forgiveness for you in the very circle you've carved out for yourself everyone hates you now and i was just like this is just intense. Yet, wow. yet he is still claiming that the left are the ones that are intolerant. <laughs> Meanwhile, like his whole audience is like <laughs> turned on him. Like it's just so it's so crazy. Yeah, yeah. That was that was a debacle that it, it made me feel bad to get so much enjoyment out of that. But oh my god, I was eating <laughs> that you, shit. Did you watch him go on the on the Glenn Beck show where he had oh, yeah. tenants as like as the one good gay where he was just like, you know, uh Glenn Beck actually compared being gay to alcoholism. He was like, I'm an alcoholic, you're homosexual and a I was like, oh my God, why are you not screaming at this man or spitting on him through the screen? Like what is going on? Well and you could that? literally that moment you could see it in Dave Rubin's eyes. The soul went out. Like the flame yeah extinguished right there because you yeah. know like every single gay person uh probably has that moment where they come out when they're young and they're told by their auntie or parent it's a phase and well we all have flaws i'm an alcoholic we've all heard that shit so to him to have to hear that in his 40s it's got to be soul crushing but he you know he fucked around a little bit he memed a little bit too close to the sun he didn't remember that the extent to which the right allows you to exist in that space as an out gay man and the same is true for trans women as well is you cannot remind them that you're actually gay like they don't want to see you with your husband they don't want to remember that you have families uh you know will not cook the birthday cake well, <laughs> yeah, don't even give him right the, sorry the wedding cake the wedding cake yeah ben shapiro refuses to uh i need actually ben shapiro that one's even worse than glenn beck he was straight up like dave's like would you have me and my husband over for barbecue he's like uh he's like well if i had a barbecue would you come over to my house and he's like uh and he's like it's not gonna be gay it's not gonna be really gay and he's like well how <laughs> gay okay i'm like that's God. so savage <laughs> yeah you you, you gotta remember your place your colleague yeah <laughs> well it's like you you are there specifically dave rubin so you can tell them that their homophobic beliefs and policies are not homophobic that's your only role the second you deviate out of that line they slap you back down and he he keeps trying to make it seem as if oh no the left's the ones they're they're the least tolerant and he wants us to think that he'll be accepted by the right but th these evangelicals are never going to accept you they are literally using you i mean dennis prager said to dave rubin's face he's so useful i mean take a fucking hint so that's why to me like i enjoyed that whole drama when he got just bashed by his own fans because it's like I never thought leopards would eat my face.
<laughs> I just, I love it so much. It just makes me think of that time. I don't know if you've seen it where Blair White was like on some conservative panel show. And I don't remember who it was. It was, it was with something... John Doyle and then uh, a really scary, like, white blonde kind of, like, uh, you know, Karen, but with, like, fire mm-hmm. in her eyes. Because she was, like, <laughs> the conservative who was straight up, like, you should not exist. Like, I yeah. like I don't want to be around you. Yeah. Holy that was, shit. That was she hard said, to like, watch. If you really want to help the, like, conservative movement or if you want, I, I can't remember how she phrased it, but something like, if you really want to help, then you um, should... Uh, start going by a male name, grow out your mustache, and cut your hair. You know, like uh, just told her to detransition. Did de- did she defend herself? No, I it was it was basically kind of like, a. Sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say well, she was kind of just just shocked, you know. But wow, see D- Blair White, that's kind of karma, honestly, and I don't feel bad for her because she was on a Vice panel, I think it was, and she was talking about how non-binary people are delegitimizing the trans movement because people don't get it. And I'm paraphrasing. So she basically said that same thing to a non-binary person on the panel, like not in in that exact way, but that was the same sentiment. So I love that somebody told her that just because like, it's, it's karma. You said the same thing to non-binary people. And in the same way that you try to delegitimize their identities, conservatives who you claim to be friends with are trying to delegitimize you. Th- this is why like, I've got no love for these grifters. And any like, anytime it blows up in their face, I feel like morally it's imperative that I celebrate that. I don't feel bad at all. You know what's wild is that Blair White used to have purple hair and be kind of like non-binary looking. And Oh, I, I think, didn't know this. I think she even used to used to turn non-binary maybe uh and then she had like a conservative turn and you know her interesting really money mm. will do a lot to people i think <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it's yeah it's sad. Like, like i said with getting alienated too and i think that's a huge part of it i don't know if that happened to her but when you look at buck angel like buck, i, I mm. when i first got on twitter i was following buck angel because I, I only knew him as a porn star and like for the first year, it was like, you know, he was whatever. Like, he didn't say anything. He didn't really post that much. He didn't seem to have that many terrible views that at least I didn't see them. And then, like, you know, the show of ContraPoints went down. <laughs> and, like, he started getting all this negative attention. And he got, like, way worse. And now he's, like, on his bio, it says something like, a female who lives as a man. And, like, <sighs> stopped using, like, he, him pronouns. Let's, like, everybody call him a, a woman or whatever. He doesn't even use he, him pronouns? I think they're like voluntary now. (laughs) Well, and I I saw I didn't really know about about Buck Angel until the whole ContraPoints uh, controversy. So that was like my first uh, experience with it. But what stands out in my mind is the way that he was groveling at J.K. Rowling's feet, basically in a tweet. I don't remember the tweet specifically, but she tweeted some transphobic bullshit uh, predictably. And both Blair White and Buck Angel were both like Yas queening J.K. Rowling, and it's I just. I can't, I I can't handle this. Like, it's just, it's going to make my head explode. Yeah. Yeah. I had to unfollow and mute that guy, even as a hate follower. And like, it's, it's hard to watch. Yeah, it is. Cause it's sad. Like, you know, that deep down they are either doing it to like gain popularity or friendships or they're distraught. Either way, like, you know, something isn't right. Like they don't feel good about what they're saying. There's no way because it's so absurd from their perspective i just don't believe it like i refuse to accept that they believe their own bullshit as you were saying though scar like is it possible that they just they get inundated with with this hatred uh, like this pile on that that then makes them dig the hole even deeper like it's It's something like like that yeah like which which makes me question is is there like just a question is there something to the idea that if someone i don't know like do we do we pile on too much? Is the internet too negative mm. in that sense? Like, it, it, is it is there are any you, are fault? You gonna do the Cody Johnson meme, the one. No, I'm just like, uh, uh, is there any fault mean to me? So I changed all my beliefs. And no, 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 <laughs> not that. I'm, look, I'm, I'm not. I'm obviously not excusing people that are you know terrible people. But but is there something to the idea that if if that weren't there, would these people not have turned to the, the uh, or go as deep as they have gone? Um, which is I, just like I don't know. I mean, I, I same think- thing like. We discussed Matt Taibbi as well. Like it was a similar situation mm. where he he may have felt a bit of a pylon after uh, some comments from that book came out, and then he got, became even more right wing. N- not to not to excuse their behavior, just to help explain it and wonder like would they have made that turn if that had had not happened? 
I think um, I think it is a mistake for us to approach these things as though people are operating in sincerity um, and good faith, mm-hmm. and that's not the truth. As as frustrating as it is, because it's no different than the Coons of the world, the Ben Carsons, the um, Herschel Walkers, and blah, 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 who come out and say all this uh, racist, anti-Black stuff and become agents of white supremacy because they think it benefits them. Um, it's the same way, right? Like, Derek Bell, who's the founder of Critical Race Theory, um, he has a concept he talks about in his book, Faces at the Bottom of the Well, called Rules of Racial Standing. But it's basically the idea that if I, as a Black person... I become, in order to tokenize myself, to ingratiate myself with the white people or who I think is the majority or where I can get most benefit, if I say the things that do not benefit my group, um, so they can say, so they're able to legitimize their white talking points and say, well, they said it, they said it. If I do that, will they curry me enough favor so much as to benefit from me? That's what you do, right? It's the whole concept of the cool. And that's no different than the, we, we find other words for it, grifter, this, blah, blah, blah. But that's all it is. People that are ultimately deciding, I have something to gain. Like, while it is it is not advantageous, you know, to the whole, I have something to gain in doing this. And so I'm going to do this at the expense of this community. It's a growth. We see it all the time. And to an earlier point y'all made, it's the reason why there's an accepted, I feel like we just don't acknowledge the elephant in the room, that the right knows that they're insincere. They know it. That's why they're able to get caught in a million different scandals and hypocrisy. And it doesn't matter because it never fucking mattered. It's all about, you know, pretense, doing what you got to do further and overall things. But a lot of it is insincere. And I think there's also something to remember in terms of when we look at commentators and pundits and stuff. It's a mistake to take these people as representatives of a movement. And that's what they, the right intentionally does, right? These this, this person that is here actively speaking against the trans community, even though they're a trans person and like blowing your fucking mind, this person is not somebody, obviously, is not a person intellectually invested in this movement. They are not an organizer out in the world, you know what I mean? They are one in individual fucking person that's choosing a lane and a car vote for themselves to get ahead and that's all that it really fucking is you know that's what it is it has nothing to do with oh we pile on we decided there are all kinds of things and all that to be explored yes the internet is a shitty place but as somebody listen as somebody i spent my every fucking day concerned about the liberation of black people and i could tell you i could find all kind of threads of black people talking bad about me i could find threads of everybody talking bad about me you could find your own camp talking bad about your shit we can't put up the flyer for the leftist mafia without people who follow me talking shit that we not this <laughs> right like I'm, every time right you get shit talk but if something if you are a principled person if something is what you ultimately care about those are your principles those are your beliefs that's just not gonna matter so that ain't got nothing mm-hmm. to do with the price of d in china at the end of the day what they're doing is as simple as this Get in where I fit in. That's all it is. They yeah. are trying to get in where they fit in and fuck the rest of everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, did right, you want to also, uh, Ole, you wanted to bring up um, a couple of things as well. Let me go to our... It was... Oh, I'm very... I'm very frustrated... It, you know, honestly, I mean, don't say I'm frustrated because I, I, I expect these things, right? But they are the concerted attack on bail reform is a is a is a mm-hmm. constant thing, um, in everywhere, right? In in New York, in Chicago, and everywhere. And the thing about this is bail has been bail reform happened in New York City in 2020 at the top of 2020. It has been incredibly successful by all metrics. The whole purpose of bail. Bail, they try to use bail politicians and the media will stoke you into believing that bail is a tool to be used to circumvent the entire criminal process to <laughs> to convict and incarcerate and punish people who have not had a trial and been convicted of a crime, right? But bail is there to ensure that people return to court. That's the purpose. That's the legal purpose of bail. Since bail has been instituted, the failure to appear rate has gone down. So again, has been successful. The actual re-arrest, less than 2%. Less than 2% of all people out since bail reform have been uh, rearrested. All statistics and metrics show that bail reform is not linked to any rise in crime. And additionally, said crime waves that they had manufactured in the first place, they have now since come out all of the New York Times and everybody and Governor Hochul herself in her own op-ed she penned acknowledged that such such crime wave never existed and bail reform is not linked to it. And yet constantly, despite the fact that we know this, 
We have Rikers that is already a human rights crisis. We had more deaths than ever last year. And now we're already at 19 deaths, way more than last year when we thought it was a human rights crisis then. And instead of doing anything to de to decarcerate and to figure out that problem, here they are now. After she just barely, she just barely won. There was no red wave anywhere else, but it was in New York City because these jackasses, the Democrats, was out here leaning in into all like it's what are you gonna it's one thing to have the right wing talking nonsense. It's another thing to have your mayor be a cop that's talking the nonsense the loudest. Like Lee Zeldin and them literally could just lean on Eric Adams rhetoric. So these fucking idiots are just peddling this fucking narrative. They're never actually coming out and addressing and debunking this nonsense, but no bail reform, don't say nothing. And at the ninth hour, who who got all uh, the AOCs, the organizers, everybody gonna come out and try and actually, you know, say the actual information. They come out at the ninth hour to say, Oh yeah, it's not this, not that, and they just barely win. And the first thing this motherfucker does is start trying to do <laughs> undo all the successful things and the things that are supported. She's fighting right now to have this um terrible appointee LaSalle who is anti-union, anti-choice in New York City. Do you know what kind of bigotry you have to be on to be anti-choice, anti-union in New York fucking city? Bro, like <laughs> what? <laughs> like what? I didn't even know that was I was like anti anti-choice. <laughs> like, look where you're at. Okay, Jesus. that's hedonism. What are we talking about? Read the but, city. I'm saying, and that's what she's doing, and and literally no support. You're getting, she's getting no no support. Your entire party is against the choice. Everybody, every senator, everybody, every council member, everyone is coming and and announced the choice, and she is finding out every way to double down. And I'm like, you have to be respectfully a jackass because nothing else makes sense. You don't have, you only narrowly. You almost got your ass whooped by a Republican in New York City. Hey. Maybe she thinks she was too far left. That's why. That, except. She knows that's not the case. She knows that's not <laughs> the case. The yeah. first thing she fucking did. Nope. Actually, nope. Already has been acknowledged. It's not the case. Came out late too late on that. She already knows it because the first thing she did, she had her, her, her stats to drop and they brought out her stats is after she put out that she wanted to attack bail reform and she wanted to lead to 25,000 more arrests. And that's when her approval ratings went down. She comes out and she starts and she pens her new, she penned a new a, a op-ed for the New York Daily News come in to come say all the bail reform and all the things we've been telling or whatever to try and get back Kareem favor and then now once she oh you get her spot let me come out now and talk shit let me talk a whole bunch of shit and it's stupid and that is where I'm at and I am exhausted so yeah New York is you know, so you know what I think, fucked you know what I think it is I think she's uh, she's so used to being Andrew Cuomo's lieutenant governor and she was used to seeing how he ran the show. And so she thought she could come in and do the same. But she doesn't realize that Andrew Cuomo was like a fucking mafia boss. Yeah. And he literally was pulling strings with all like going through back channels with all different groups. Exactly. Talking with the New York Republicans and making sure they had his back. He was talking with the, the Democrats and making sure they had his back. And yeah. he was using everyone. the Republicans votes to protect him. 100%. Said, oh, I can't do this progressives. And he was using the deals he had with the Democrats to go back and say, oh, it's I tried to be more moderate, but I couldn't because of the Democrats. Yep. He was playing it every which way because he made sure he was always protected because he was an operator like that. 100%. He was a fucking mafia boss. He knew how to pull. He knew how to play the game of politics. And he has, and he been in this. And that's my thing. Yeah. She's been like she's that guy and she's not that guy. I'm she's like, not. You have no support. You have not. You can't be doing this. Like you cannot be doing this. You too. You're but a skinny teeth. You're yeah, by the skinny, the skinny teeth. Not anti-union. Not New York City, sweetie. Well, hold on. Because now you're not, you're not just, that's not just the lefties that's going to be upset. You playing with the union? Oh, okay. And I also, I, I don't think I need to say this, but this isn't like me saying anything nice about Andrew Cuomo. This is just the facts. Like, that's who he was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I don't think that was an endorsement. No. No. Yeah, no, no that's no. facts. Yeah. Oh, that's facts. Obviously, like, listen, Andrew Cuomo, I was, I actually started tweeting because of how much I fucking hate Andrew Cuomo. Because he, he was the first person. <laughs> no, I, I, I swear, I swear to God. I swear to God. That's my awesome. Twitter, my Twitter was Papa Slime 
And he started trying to roll back bail reform at the top of at the at the top of the pandemic. And my job was like, oh, y'all should say something about it or whatever. And you literally trying to make my life hard. Or are you trying to incarcerate my clients? So that's why I started tweeting. So I was on some fuck Andrew Cuomo shit every day in the middle of when he was getting getting peddled out as New York's as America's sweetheart. You remember that little mm-hmm. oh, yeah. oh, and I was oh fucking, yeah. and yo, I was upset. My mother was fighting with me like that's my book. My mother was like, that's my boy. That's my boy. Don't, don't, don't. I'm like, oh. No. Ooh, I'm like, I bet I'm she like, was enjoying the CNN segments where, when he had his brother on, and just like, bro, <laughs> two of oh, them like, back to back. <laughs> was ready to go to war about Andrew Cuomo like every day. Like I was hot, heated. I'm like, mommy, I'm not asking you. I'm fucking telling you, mommy. I live here. My mommy is in the Bahamas, ready to die about some Andrew Cuomo trying to tell me what reality is in the New York. I'm like, oh my veins and my neck. I'm like, mommy. <laughs> like, oh my god. So I'm just like, bro. It was so long. Andrew Cuomo had so much like around him. It was so hard for them to bring Andrew Cuomo down. Like that was a that was a a, a feat. I don't I don't know if they celebrated it quite. It was as cancel as culture, as he says. Cancel <laughs> culture. Oh, they really listened. They they really they really got on his ass. And I was like, yes, excellent, excellent, because I've been couldn't stand him. But my point is, you ain't got none of that, girl. You are not America's sweetheart. You don't have no fine ass brother to come peddle you out on no show, like. What's up, miss? What are you doing? They don't like you like that. You barely won. You're not polling high. This is a sexist world, miss. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. That period was so bad. Do you remember the song Cuomo Sexual? Oh my God. You're it's bringing up things that YouTube. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> it's still on YouTube. It's so bad. Chris, Chris Cuomo is fine. Though. I'm not even going to lie. I'm not going to set up here and knock above the facts. Like, I'm not going to lie in that man's name. He's fine. He's fine. That's, that's, this is about that's Andrew Cuomo. Like, like, <laughs> but he's trifling too, right? He did some fucked up shit too, right? He was out here. Yes. The fact oh, that yeah. he was trotting out his brother and covered him. I, I just want to say this again. Always, always a principled bitch. Despite him being fine, I was I was on his ass about that from Jump Street. I was like, <laughs> this is not okay. This is not ethical. I was like, nobody but me sees how this isn't ethical. Like, he, he brought his brother on his show and called him the best politician in the country. <laughs> That's what right. like, yeah. I, I remember covering that. It was so insane how this was allowed to happen. Like it, 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 that should have that should have got him fired. Like that. Like having your yeah. brother on, propping him up. And this is wild, by the way. Like cleaning it up, America was no, not even just America. This is while he was killing elderly people. In he was wasn't he sending the elderly to like uh, I forget what it was, like hospitals or or some facilities that had COVID, and he was like giving them COVID in the the nursing homes. Yeah, yeah, Mm -hmm. it's a monster, a fucking monster, terrible person. Yeah, I do like how you said he was sending them to hospitals and giving them COVID. <laughs> 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 like, oh, granny, you're taking this shot of COVID, damn it. <laughs> no, he was sending them to nursing. He was sending they were getting sick with they were getting they were going to the hospital. They were testing positive for COVID and they were being sent back to the nursing homes. And yeah, they were basically just turning nursing homes into a petri dish of That's old right, yeah. people with COVID. Yes. And honest. he tried to hide it. He, they tried to cover it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was mad ass. It was mad ass. No wickedness. Absolute pure wickedness. Son. And Cuomo, yeah, before long before I was hating on Eric Adams, I was on Cuomo's ass, son. Like, I was on Cuomo and de Blasio, like white on rice. I, oh, I, I fucking couldn't stand him. Ooh, I hated Cuomo. I hated that motherfucker. When he, let me tell you, Cuomo became my enemy. My he was my he, was, he became my enemy when he snuck in into like a, a, a like a emergency COVID relief package at the at the beginning of the lockdown. He snuck in a bail reform rollback. Um, I was like. This son of a bitch. And it's one, yo, this son of a motherfucking bitch, son. You know, like, yo, at the time, who think about the at the time, like think about at the beginning of the pandemic, the lockdown when you was when you felt scared. Like when you don't know what the fuck is happening, you felt scared, bro. Like I it felt very eerie, very scary. And I'm like, and I'm thinking, like, my clients, like, imagine being in fucking Rikers. You've been in there now a year, two years, like already behind closed doors, like, like and you have not had a trial. You've had a hearing. You pre-trial. You've already been in Rikers. And now a fucking pandemic. People, are, everyone is scared. Should have shut down. No one, the corrections up is, is ghost town. People are like panicking. <laughs> you are in a pandemic. You are you are in inside of Rikers where that's raging. 
and you are the motherfucker who is what? I was like 27, 26, that has to be on the receiving end of the phone call of that person. And you have to in the stress of trying to get that person out and, and the fear of that. And I'm like, no, you literally, it's one thing theoretically, I know you want to put more people in jail, but now I know you literally are doing it. Now I have to figure out and deal with the stress and anxiety of like how to fuck. Well, I'm scared my goddamn self. I don't know what's going like, blah, blah, blah. I hate that son of a bitch. Like, and he had he had people incarcerated at Rikers in upstate, like making the hand sanitizer, but they couldn't use it. The hand sanitizer they sell in. And that, I hate this motherfucker. You have no idea. Like great evil. Just like evil. Like, I don't even know how to describe it. Like, there's there's levels of corruption and self-serving behavior, but that is just, he's evil. He's but straight he up evil. And, and let me tell you something. And let me tell you something. Ain't got shit on Eric Adams. That's the evil son of a bitch. That right there. Mm. Eric you think Adams he's worse? Monster son. Like, and I let me tell you, I want to just say this. I fucking knew he would be. I knew it. I knew it. I, <laughs> yeah. knew, it. I knew it. I remember on, on 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 New Year's the last year when um who was it? Like Andy Cohen and them was like drunk as fuck. We're like, woo, the Blasio was oh, out yeah, there. Yeah. I, I literally quote you, I can say, let me tell you, that's one of my best age tweets. I was like, this would be great if I did not know that Eric Adams is about to make de Blasio look like child's play. And child's play, he did. Child's play, he did. You know what's the, the only thing worse? The only thing worse than a, than a, than a cop in a cop in a in a in a in a world of white people that want all the same things as the conservatives they just want to package it differently they want a lot of the status quo the only thing worse than that is a fucking black cop so they could feel like ah liberal ah, diversity diversity <laughs> they're like ooh we got listen I'm like ooh nigga a black cop I was like Listen, my heart, I my heart could have stopped. Like I, I knew it. And he, listen, he does not disappoint. That motherfucker is evil. Derek Adams, yo. Earlier last year, in like the first quarter of the year, like there were like three deaths within the space of a week at Rikers back to back because of the corrections officers' negligence. Eric Adams goes and says, Oh, I'm gonna take a trip to Rikers and goes to Rikers and says, I'm here to show my support to the corrections officers. I want you to let I want to let you know they're trying to shame you, but I am not ashamed of you. I am I am proud of you. They watched the motherfucker choke to death on an orange on video. They like on video, bro. Like they they left a guy hanging. Like bro, this motherfucker went up there talking about I'm. I'm don't mind what they talking about. Y'all's my niggas. Don't, 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 don't even worry about that. A monster. Then uh, NYPD shot an 18-year-old in traffic. And Eric Adams said, well, cars can be weapons. So they have to deal with people as though they could be a terrorist. Yeah. They said, Eric Adams, y'all have been, we outlawed. We made it illegal. Solitary confinement is over. Word on the street is y'all are still using solitary confinement of people, right? Because <laughs> this motherfucker, Eric Adams, said, no, 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 sweetie. It's not solitary confinement. It's restrictive housing. <laughs> no, stop. Oh, my God. Yo, you know what makes me sick? He, <laughs> oh is, he gives it up like a Tyler Perry villain. Like, I, he make me fucking sick. Like, he does the kind of shit me and my best friend, like, do for jokes. Like, that would be fucking hilarious. Like, in your mind, like, hey, hey no, no, nigga. Yeah. yeah, watch this, watch this, watch this. <laughs> Not solid, there, I can find it. <laughs> Restrictive house. But this motherfucker's doing it for real, bro. And nobody's real. Nobody's even here in the comedy style. It's just, just me. Just me mad somewhere, like, the fucking Grinch on Mount Crumpet. Pissed the fuck off. Like, what the fuck? I that's like enhanced so. interrogation. Like that's so yeah. draco like not draconian, it's Orwellian, like the double speak. It's just so brazen. Mm-hmm. By the way, I, I did share a video in the chat that you all would appreciate since we're talking about cops. I mentioned it last week. It's the Sailor Moon video, and I know you all would appreciate it. So before the end, we we've got to watch it. But sorry. I'll, I'll get it ready. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 very good. If you're a fan of anime and you have the A cab spirit within you. I think that you can appreciate it. I got a, I got a good chuckle out of it. Anyways, we still got like ten minutes on here, right? 
Yes. Well, tea time with Ole starts at 7.30 p.m. PST, yes. right? That's was, right. Yeah. I was yes. Gonna, can y'all put the link in the public chat? I'm talking. My my guest is my best friend, Nia JL. Very dope employment uh, labor lawyer. We are talking. Mess, though. Um, Meg, Tori, Will Smith, Chris Rock, Slap, uh, Neo Side Baby, Things that I love and excite me. And obviously, we will be talking um, to the callers. I am going to take time to get questions from everybody and interact with y'all because y'all know I love that. It's going to be great. Be nice. Fun. So go on there. I, I love Neo. Neo's in my top 10 R&B singers. Listen, Neo, Neo be having babies on his woman. He needs, <laughs> he needs, <laughs> he needs to stop. stop. <laughs> uh, so before yeah. we start wrapping up, is there any is there a topic that we didn't touch on before we get to canceled, uncanceled? Yeah. Can can you hear me? Yes. Can someone put the link? Can oh, okay. My my chat is telling me that I was muted, and I was like, I'm I I just restarted everything. I think I'm okay. No, you're good. I can oh, hear you good. fine. If yeah. someone knows how to put the put things in the public chat, can you put my call in link for tea time in there for me? Because I don't know. How. Yeah. Can you post it in the private, and I'll put it in the uh, yes. the YouTube chat. Yes. Let me do that. Oh, shit. I can post in there if I can find that link. Oh, and, and before we end up forgetting, um, I don't know if you all, we kind of stopped doing shout outs, but if you want to shout yourself out, but we'll give Scarlett the opportunity since she's our guest this week. Scarlett, tell us where we can find you. I know you kind of did earlier, but like give us all your socials and whatnot. Yeah, you can find me at Twitter on, uh, on Twitter at queer <laughs> underscore money. Um, on Twitch, my show is never underscore log underscore off, and the other one's never, un never underscore no wait, never game underscore over. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can find me on there uh, or my personal Twitch, and also on OnlyFans. Nice, yeah, and never log off is fucking amazing. I've been on, and uh, the stuff that you all introduced me to, I would never see it had it not been for your show. Uh, funny shit. So yeah, check them out on Twitch, yeah. and uh, I'll link to uh, I'll add your links below this video as well on YouTube, so people can easily find it. Thank you. Okay, dropping Ole's call. Oh, David already beat me to it. Okay, well now there's there's two different links, so there's no excuses. You have to go and listen to. Yeah. Yes, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> time. Be fun, like obviously less serious, less serious, but fun. All right, so uh, well, let's do let's do Mike's video. Yes, I'm. Actually, I'm very are, are we also going to do? Are we doing Don Junior as well? <laughs> it, it's oh, illegal, but it's still it's still oh. effective. Yeah, it. Oh, it's it's totally up to you all. Fair. It's highly effective. Oh, I rank yeah. Sailor Moon yeah. higher in Salience in terms of what I want you all to see, and then Don Junior. I have like a whole playlist for you all. Fuck. Oh, so you want Sailor Moon first? All right, we can do that. Yeah, that one. It's it's pretty quick. Let me uh, bring this in. Presley. She just died. Who died? Who, who died? Lisa Marie Presley. I don't know. My mom just sent that to me. Oh, Le uh, Elvis's daughter. Oh, Lisa Marie oh. oh. oh who oh. dated John Travolta? I think. Huh. She wasn't even that old. Fifty-four. Oh yeah, that's not old. Tim Pool's gonna say it was the vaccine. Give him two seconds. <laughs> I guarantee it. Oh, by the way, can, can I just quickly say we didn't talk about this as a topic. I wanted to though. They are taking every single spontaneous death that is happening and saying that it's the vaccine. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. I, I, I like there was a, a reporter in Canada for CTV who she's young. She had a stroke or you know what appeared to be a stroke live on air, and then immediately they did a whole segment on. They're like, I'm not going to say what this is or is not, but I'm just going to say you have to make a choice, and if you think that choice that you make is going to you know potentially give you myocarditis then who knows what could happen it's just like just you know being cowards to not take a stance on the whole thing but like she had to come out the next day and make a statement because of the harassment that she was getting being like uh yeah no i i, I am young but that was a stroke it was not because of the vaccine like you know fuck all of you why, why are you sending me all this conspiracy <sighs> bullshit not to mention like who just died diamond right yeah diamond. Oh, silk. like it was diamond. diamond and wasn't she unvaxxed like she was apparently a big... Apparently, she's suing anyone, or Silk is suing anyone who says that it was from COVID. So, because they never allegedly, said specifically it was COVID. But, but she was in the hospital to... with COVID since like November. According yep. to Trump, according to I Trump, can't get any died. more threats for lawsuits. Sorry, go ahead, Matt. <laughs> according according to Trump, she died because her heart was just too big. And it... <laughs> right. That's sweet. Right. That's sweet. That's, that's, that's actually a really that's wholesome nice. and cute thing for him to say. Um, yeah. yeah. 
you know, I, about as, I, that's about as wholesome as Trump gets. You know, yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's as that's as wholesome as he gets. Exactly. I Honestly, mean, we should like... we should we should just be using that for whenever they uh, do this suddenly died bullshit. Oh, their heart, <laughs> yeah, yeah oh, their, their heart was just too big. Their heart yep. was too big. Yeah, absolutely. All right, here's this. Uh, I have not seen this. あたしたちには使命があるの。死んでたまるもんですかこれは経過は人間じゃないわ。みんな土人形よ。そうとわかれば容赦はしないわ。おまいや。そう。あ、ロン。あ、ちょっと <laughs> 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 Wait, this is unedited. Not oh, it's edited. Totally. <laughs> it's edited. Yeah. <laughs> not, not, not the dialogue. I meant, I meant the animation. Like, no. Oh yeah, yeah. The they just oh, changed yeah. the subtitles. Put, oh, okay, put, that, okay. put that back on screen for a second. Central control. Just put the, put the. You don't have to play it, but just put that back on screen for a second. Yeah. Mike, how did you? How did you discover? This viral sensation with 684 right. views. Oh my god! It's not even that popular. <laughs> no, it was. I, it was on Reddit. I don't know if this particular video was on Reddit, but it was on Reddit, and there's like a bunch of different copies of it. So I don't know. Views, <laughs> One day he's like, you know what? I hate the cops, and I love Sailor Moon. Let's yeah. put those together. I mean, right. That's what I was thinking. What else? How do you come across this video unless you're looking yeah. for Sailor Moon sex fuck? Everyone follow my Taeyeon Uchiha sock puppet account discovered by Matt Bender again. Yeah, oh yeah, this is, this is your side channel, right? Yeah. <laughs> Mike's gonna Man, Mike's gonna start exposed. just now that it's out, he's just gonna start live streaming Sailor Moon content from that channel. <laughs> you can't get nothing past Matt. He's gonna sniff out those sock puppet accounts. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I don't know. I always look for the most ridiculous things, and that just stuck out to me. 684 views. I didn't even notice it. I didn't. I, I'm pretty sure there's, like, multiple uploads when I searched for it. But, no, it was it was posted on, on uh, Reddit. Oh, here we go. This is what I wanted uh, Ole to react to last week. Uh, here, let's watch. They want to take those funds and donate them to leftist causes rather than giving them back to investors and all of that other stuff. But this is a person... Who was wrapped up in that scandal? She ran a fund that was involved in it. <laughs> a close colleague of crypto king Sam Bankman Freed, Ellison is now pleading guilty, saying she knew what they did was illegal. Oh, so she knew what no. they did was illegal, <laughs> but the Washington Post is still Post. trying to make her into a victim. Okay, I mean, think about that. The Washington Post. Owned by Jeff Bezos. Okay, so it's the Amazon Washington Post. Other notable headlines from the Washington Post this in is not one the past. Five. People in chat asking. This is Abu, not sped up. My dad <laughs> took out. It was leading. ISIS. No, it is not sped up. No. He's an austere no. religious scholar, not a murderer, rapist, piece of crap. This is the Washington Post. This is another article from the Washington Post. Before the FTX collapse, founder. Sam Bankman Freed poured millions into pandemic prevention. He's such a good guy. We should make sure he gets off easy. And guess what, folks? In our system, he probably will. Unlike you, or certainly not me. How is he on the side of? Did the things <laughs> like what that he did? Most of those. <laughs> the everyday man, Trump Jr. So he's anti crypto. I wonder why. <laughs> Because it seems no, as though he defrauded oh, billions no, uh, from yeah, people uh, and uh, poured them in into leftist causes. And they're shocked. They want to put it back in there. Because guess what, folks? The legacy media, they took their money to write headlines for them, in my opinion, right? And by golly. <laughs> oh, my. Gonna... Okay, hold up. Is is he trying to be his dad now? Like, he's he's putting that, yes. like, ah, that, like, that, I, that hard, like. <laughs> actually, I thought I thought with his voice and his movements, he was. He was sort of channeling like Gilbert Godfrey. Why? Gilbert Godfrey. And, and moving around so much like this, I just don't get it. I mean, it's weird, bizarre. 
Also, he, Except he's he looks actually unhealthy, funny. right? Like he looks like he lost a lot of weight. Yeah. Like he's, but oh. not like in a good, healthy way. Like he's got a, a large head, and his body is <laughs> kind of small. His head has Bob grown substantially. <laughs> and the reason he's going at SBF is because SBF is the perfect uh, target for conservatives, specifically because. Uh, of all that new those news reports about how much he donated to Democrats, so they use him as mm. the example of oh look you donate to Dems and look what happens you get away with uh, committing huge financial crimes. Uh, of course, as we know, he was literally extradited from bah- the Bahamas and is going to court and has been hit with geez I don't even like like a dozen different uh, charges of wire fraud and conspiracy to commit what money laundering. Like the dude's going away. There's no doubt about it. I mean, his. I don't know. His, Don uh, Jr. His, said he's getting off. Not like no. you and him. You know, no. just average Joes. <laughs> Don Jr. <laughs> no, his part. His part. His his uh the other FTX executives who agreed to uh, out to a plea deal in exchange for uh, aiding in the case against him. Their plea still involves them going to prison for uh, many years. I think for a, a few of them, in decades are involved. Like he's not. He's not. He will, I think, get a uh, – uh, uh, he will also – I don't know if he'll plea out, um, but I think eventually he will end up agreeing to uh, uh, tell prosecutors information about other names in the cryptocurrency industry in exchange for some sort of deal. Uh, he will still go away for uh, many years. But I, I do think he know he has information about other players in the space that he will want to uh, use to uh, get a slightly better, uh, uh, more lenient term. But that's still going to be uh, many years. There's no scenario where this dude does not go to jail. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Or not, they paid for those headlines. Headlines. More <laughs> money or other people's defrauded money. And they're going to write the headlines. The Washington Post literally only exists to push Democrat Party and progressive talking points and to stir up hatred, whether it's racial or otherwise, to make sure what? you get through the extremist leftist paywall for their subscribers. Anyone that still considers them a reputable purveyor of journalism. Come on. Wake the hell up, folks. Come on. So that's your update on May. Oh, my God. Rumble paid him one million for a contract. I have to point that out again. I yes. have to. I got to say, that's he, he He made a bad deal then because reports have come out recently that they paid Andrew Tate nine million dollars for a Rumble deal. Yes. Um, is that is that going to be from prison? Still uh, they, they are currently they, they said in a statement to they did not deny the amount in a statement to Axios, I believe who it was, or CNN. I can't recall where I saw this. They did not deny the number in a statement, but they did say that we are not going to prejudge him. And then we will wow. just see how the, the case plays out before. Weird, weird yes. take, considering the guy said that he had sex with a 16 year old on camera and like on camera. That's not like that's a hearsay. That's him bragging. He's got an episode where he's like, yeah, well, when I was an adult, I had sex with a 16 year old. That's that's Listen, his if I was so, if I, if might I have been was junior, I'd be mad about that. Deal. I, mean, I mean, he took a lot less from uh, Andrew than Andrew Tate did, and he is putting out a lot more content. And I would say he's a larger name for the audience on that platform. And on top of that, all uh, as far as we know, Donald Trump Jr. didn't even. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't even want to go there. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> Well, I will say, to, in my opinion, I think that they're overpaying because his, like, I, I swear to God, his engagement is competitive with us. Like, David Dole 100% gets more views. Um, Thank he's you. competitive with me. <laughs> like, I'm comparable. I'm probably edging him out a little bit. Um, he's not He's not going to bring in a lot of eyeballs. So a million bucks for that. I mean, fuck, people. What are we doing wrong here? We're not right wingers. Well, we <laughs> That's true. what we're doing wrong. Not really. I mean, canceling. Oh, oh right. Yeah, sorry, uh, oh, Olay's yeah. got her show to go to. Are we doing cancel on cancel? Anyone's got anybody? That's it. That's it. Scarlett, do you have anyone you want to cancel or anyone you want to uncancel who hath been canceled? We have the power to do that. It's 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 pretty cool. Who's been mm-hmm. who was canceled last week? I missed it. You. What? Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We canceled. Yeah, yeah, we canceled. Okay, so I, I nominate we uncancel Matt Binder for starting. Because, what? What? Because, what? because, what? because you don't know, follow us on Twitter. Wait, wait, That's wait, why. Wait, 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 and he didn't rectify it. I don't even so, know what I need to rectify. What do I need to do? You don't follow us on Twitter, Binder. 
that's that part of why he he needs to be canceled. No. The fact that no, no, that's part of the fact that he doesn't know is part of why he needs to be canceled. I'm just trying to no. love. No, no, I'm, just trying to, <laughs> I'm levying new charges now. Figure this. Imagine, right? You you co-host a show with five motherfuckers and you don't follow some people. <laughs> Said I follow. You don't follow me or David. So it's just you two. So we call you out. Bender, so I've been on your show like multiple out. times. I, I discovered this. I'm like, wait, Bender follows like the worst pieces of shit in the world. He doesn't follow me. So we, wait, we I don't follow, follow you? you? No. No, you don't follow no, me. Mike, I follow you, right? Yeah, this is why, Matt, and not because you follow me because I'm biased, but I think we should give people second chances. No. Maybe you just saw their <laughs> tweets on your timeline. No, 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 I can't bail you out on this one. I can't. No, not only do you not follow us, but when we call you out on the group chat, you don't fucking know because you don't read it. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then we we go on our show that you're not at. Like, well, we to be to be fair, Blair has missed like three episodes. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll cancel. We'll cancel. I'll, I'll vote that we cancel Blair in a moment. We'll yeah, because we cancel Blair this week. <laughs> we'll cancel Blair. We'll cancel Blair. But then we call you out on the show and cancel you there. And again. You have no idea because you didn't fucking want me to. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even care about that. I, I just oh, want to be follow oh, on Twitter. Be, that's all. Okay, that's all yeah, I want. To, be, to be fair, I, did, I didn't watch the episode I missed because I, I would have had too much FOMO. Lance, I, 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 like, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to. I don't want to get the. FOMO I have no problem. No, Listen, I got charges for everybody. Everybody could get prosecuted if y'all. Oh my god! Like, wait, wait, this David, is why you, you can't like, give leftists the power because they turn against each other and start canceling each other immediately. I did not know why. I don't know why, but I cancel Mike. Okay. I did not realize our cancel segment was so. Serving, I didn't realize we could cancel people because they don't follow us on Twitter. Excuse me, <laughs> we're five yes, episodes in already cancel each other. Is crazy, <laughs> David. You have two Twitter accounts, right? You sure I don't follow one of them? And I got confused. Oh, you probably follow the shitty one. You got to follow David Dole. That's that's oh, the okay, there you go. So then, when we get down to it, I just don't follow all the uh, Yeah, right. Uh, to be fair, you might not even follow that one. I don't know. He doesn't. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't follow. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna levy some new charges against you in a second. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what? Now, now that I know I was canceled last week, I'm not following any of you anymore. I, mean, I, mean, <laughs> I defended you, so if you unfollow me, I unfollow you. It's mutually assured. Wait, what was your defense of me? What was your defense of me? Um, that we can't jump to conclusions, obviously, and we have to hear you. him out. It's <laughs> it's go, not yeah. a bias or conflict of interest, David. Okay, it's just that you know I think that we need to give Matt the opportunity to defend himself because he wasn't on the show. Well, he gets a I defend... he gets a second chance. He could follow me right now, but if he doesn't do that, then he canceled for sure. <laughs> See, I don't like I don't I don't like being held up like that. I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> You have seven yo, days. Yo, Matt, Matt, seven is the days. Client, Matt, Matt is the client that like knows he's convicted of job, but will not talk about a plea. Like, I was like, ah, nah, I deserve like, my just like Matt, guy. Matt, I respect your work. That, that's all it is. I respect you, and it's just like, it hurts me. That's all. It's, it's hurt. All right, it's hurtful. Right. Well, if you say something like that, yes. Otherwise, I was about to say, I don't give in. You know, I don't give in to the demands of terrorists over here. <laughs> Follow me or else. <laughs> are we, who are we uncanceling? I think we should uncancel Diamond. Or what do we do? <laughs> because she who? has no, yeah. a Diamond. What? Are you, what? Diamond? Diamond from Diamond and Silk, the one uh, who died. I, I think we should no, she's, she's, she's uncancel done, she's her. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, what are you um, uncanceling? Diamond and Silk, the right wing duo. What are you uncanceling for? Though? The coons. We, why would we do that? Why would we uncancel them? What's the? Because she. You gotta defend your position, Mike. <laughs> okay, yeah, listen. That's true, actually. Oof. She entered heaven. Now. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> that was wait, wait. <laughs> oh, run it back. Run it back. Where? <laughs> Where? Listen. What you mean is that she's already in hell, so it's already too bad. It's it's, it's already too bad. Oh, bad shit. I should I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have spoke. But listen, her sins have been erased. What she done on earth? <laughs> Maybe she's in God's hands now. What? We should just. <laughs> What? 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 No, just forgive and forget. What? Where did you go to church, Mike? When you die, your sins are erased. No, no, no. Hail Mary. Hail Mary for you to say I can't. Let me just reverse. Listen, listen, listen. According, according to Mike, Jeff Epstein's a good guy now. His dad, his sins are erased. Oh, don't fuck with me. Don't do me dirty like that, Matt. I was defending you, motherfucker. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know about well, a serious I guess you have no real names. I don't know. Yeah. 
Who's canceled right now? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like everybody who's canceled deserves it. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I'm not ready for him yet. (laughs) It's going to be a a long, like maybe a thousand years and lots of rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. This is hard because like I hate a lot of people and I feel like if they're canceled, then fuck them. They deserve it. Oh, I got it. I got it. Can we uncancel uh, Pee Wee Herman? Why we cancel? Who canceled Pee Wee Herman? Who? No one canceled Pee Wee Herman. No, a long time ago. was broadly canceled uh, yeah. because apparently it was like he was masturbating in a public theater and he's like and exposed himself. Right. Oh, right. 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 It, it, right. It, right. It, right. It, okay. It that that it's, it's where you are supposed to masturbate. And, and Wait, it's we, like, can go, it's, we can go back in time. We're talking about something that happened. In like, we the, can go back in time. He hasn't been uncanceled. He was persona non grata. Right. What are you talking like, about? He low, had a show on. His show came back on Broadway in the 2010s. He's been he's hosted a game show. I forgot about that. He did come back in television. Paul Rubens has been uncanceled like a decade. Two decades. Well, <laughs> oh, shit. All right, all right. Well, what do you got? I, I got man. Where, where he had a show. He uh, there was a new Pee Wee movie on Netflix a couple years ago. <laughs> was that <there> really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which I watched because I Pee Wee Herman probably has shaped my sense of humor and my really my entire life. Oh, you're Matt, muted. You, you, you muted. You went mute while you were talking. That was bizarre. Sorry. <laughs> wait, was that a was that a bit? Was that part that's, of a bit? Where, where, where you're like, that's so funny. That's zany, like, wait, wait. <laughs> you said he influenced your sense of humor, and Jesus muted you. That's so fucking funny. <laughs> I think you're back now. Oh, I'm crying. Okay. I don't know. I, I, I got to That's y'all it. head over to tea time with the late ice. I vote we don't cancel anybody. There's just gonna be That's a fair, yeah. That's we, don't fair. Uncancel any, we don't uncancel anybody, but we cancel more people. Um, we have to so cancel next Blair. week. That's all. Let's cancel Blair. Yeah, yeah Blair's canceled cancel this week. Blair. She's but not here. Blair's on probation. <laughs> she can Blair can make her case next week. Okay. Yeah, okay. but no, but but the bender. It's Tough sentencing. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> well, if you two, if you two would go and check your Twitter notifications, <laughs> you will find oh. some. Oh, <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. look at this. Bender's oh, a, a great guy. Oh. <laughs> what, what a great guy Bender is. <laughs> so that's our uncancellation for this week. Y'all head over to Tea Time with Olay. It's gonna be really great. Go on, call in. I talk to people. I'm fun. Okay, that's that's my plug. Toodaloo, toodaloo. Bye. Bye. I think you all know who the rest of us are. We don't have to. <laughs> yeah, you know again, me. I will link to, all of, definitely... I will link to Scarlett's uh, stuff below, below this video on YouTube. I am David Dole. I host The Rational National, so check it out. There, there you go. I am Mike Figueredo. <laughs> <laughs> we are confusing. Mike, one of the first times I was ever recognized, someone thought I was from the Humanist Report. That, Seriously? Like, he, he got the two shows. Yeah, I think I messaged you after this. He got the two shows mixed up. Uh, he's like, are you a humanist report? Like, compliment close, yeah, rational, rational. You, you two are pretty interchangeable. That, that's a huge compliment to me. <laughs> that's it. Cancel. Cancel. Yeah. Uh, all right, Matt. That's it. Last. <laughs> One of us could be eliminated, and nobody would even notice. They just think that you know everything is copacetic in the world. It just also disappear. True. <laughs> all right, folks. All right, folks. Scarlett, thank you so much for joining. Yeah, you. thank you so much, Scarlett, yes. for coming. Thank you for inviting me. This is great. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, well, you. folks, we'll see you all next week, next Thursday at five thirty PM PST. Yeah, when you good. use the PST time because that's not the time I use. <laughs> yeah, I know it's it's east <laughs> Eastern. Time it's the only time I use, folks. So you have to adapt to me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> all right, take care. All right, bye, people.